All right, Carmichael, let me know if you can hear me now, Carmichael. Yeah, let me know if that fixed things here on my end. All right, sorry about the audio issue there. But yeah, let me know. All right, perfect, perfect. Do I sound okay, Carmichael, or does it come off as kind of like with an echo? But yeah, how are you, Carmichael? And already we got a little bit of pushing and shoving going on here between both teams. And again, who's gonna establish their dominance here? So Perez and a quarterback, one back behind him on the play. Third and three coming up. First drive of the game. Excellent field position here. Trying to get the first down. They snap the ball. Play fake. Looking. Throws it short. It's completed. Can he get the first down? And he looks like he does get the first down before he's knocked out of bounds. So fresh new set of downs to work with here for Arlington. Let's see. Carmichael says you sound okay to me and I'm doing pretty good. That's what's up, Carmichael. Talk to me, Carmichael. A lot of changes with your Pittsburgh Steelers, man. Let me know how are you feeling. What did you like, and what was most disappointing in terms of so far what you've seen with the offseason? So, what do you love, and what did you hate? All right. So, from the 22-yard line, receiver goes in motion, beats it to the back off the right guard, and he's going to fight for it for two yards on the carry. So now we got second down coming up. Carmichael says, got to go renegades this game. And so uh, you, you don't have to do that. You could go with the Stallions. You know, you could do that. All right, so they hand it to the back up the middle. Fighting forward there. Takes it all the way to about the 15-yard line there. So now it's going to create third down. And that's what you want. Third and three. Continuously do that. We know that the Stallions historically have shown great defense. So it's very important here that being this close in the red zone, you got to come away with some points if you are Arlington here. Let's see. Carmichael says, you love all the signings, but you say you're sad that you traded Dante Johnson. I did see that. I did see that. And so, but it only means, you know, more opportunity for George Pickens. He'll definitely get even more of the lion's share of the targets. But certainly, I expect you guys to. Oh, man, what a hit. What a hit. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. The Stallions say, hey, new league, same us. What a hit. Show me a replay on that one. And wow, Perez got rocked on that one from behind. That was insane. That was insane. Knock the ball loose. So the Stallions here, just when it looked like Arlington was going to try to get some points here, Six plays, you know, 11 yards, over three minutes to turn the time possession off the clock. But they got to him there with that pass rush there and hit him at the same time that he was trying to throw and ultimately forced the fumble. So when we come back, we'll get to see the Birmingham Stallions offensively and see what they look like. Carmichael says, and Colorado Patterson getting signed right after the kickoff rule change. And so, yes, that was huge. That was huge right there. Uh, so definitely... Just his familiarity, obviously, you know, with Arthur Smith, that's a plus as well to have a third running back behind, obviously, Jalen Warren and Najee Harry that, that can come in and just, you know, keep things going and knows the system and plus the value that he's going to bring on special teams, which will be very interesting to say the least this upcoming um, NFL season. So looking forward to that. Carmichael says, I wish they would have brought the Maulers um, into the UFL. And so it would have been nice. It would have been nice. I was a little surprised myself they didn't. But it would have been nice. But we'll get to see what Birmingham looks like offensively. CJ Marebo will be running back one here as um, Bo announced his retirement, I think, earlier, like in the spring. And so, but Braden! <laughs> Brayden, what's good with you? Talk to me, Brayden. How are you feeling about your Packers? And Brayden says, hey, JB, welcome back. Appreciate that, Brayden. 
Just as I asked um, Carmichael, how are you feeling, Braden? I know you had to be excited about the Josh Jacobs signing. That was that was a shocker right there on um, how quickly you guys just did that. And Aaron Jones is just like, I guess I got to find somewhere else. <laughs> Absolutely. But again, in case you missed it, Birmingham defensively forced a fumble here in which Arlington, you know, they had a great return to get things started. Looked like they were moving, but that pass rush caught Perez from behind. Forced the fumble, and now the Stallions will get the football for the first time offensively, and we're going to see how they look here. Let's see. All right, so first quarter, 12 minutes and 8 seconds to go. The score still right now, 0-0, but Birmingham, first time with the football. Can they get the first points of the UFL season? And we've got Matt Corral, that's right. He was in the NFL, but spent a couple times, you know, with the Patriots last year, Panthers before that, you know, kid from Ole Miss. Can line up in a shotgun here. Three receivers, one tight end, one back, gets the snap, fakes it to the back, throws it short, caught by the tight end. Oh, look at him. He's rumbling already to about the 48-yard line. And that's Steinberg picking up where he left off at last year. And so it's good to see so many familiar faces, honestly. And Leslie Carmichael says, I didn't expect Josh Jacobs in Green Bay. Such a weird move. I didn't expect Saquon to go to the Eagles and stuff like that, you know. So running back said, hey, I'm going to do it for me this year. Derrick Henry, I thought he was going to end up in Dallas, but Baltimore is a nice move for them. I like it. All right, Shotgun. Feeds it to CJ, and CJ stumbles forward for a yard off the left tackle. Second and nine coming up. And again, I'm excited here. You know, Matt Corral, a lot of talent here. And I feel like this is good for him and stuff like that. And if he can go out there and keep the quarterback play what it's been the last couple of years, I have no doubt that he can find his way into a team like competing for a spot or something like that. But I'm excited with just all the names. It's good to be able to see a lot of people that I'm familiar with already. Ball thrown, deflected. Great job there by Arlington. He was coming on the blitz, got a hand up and deflect that. So now we've got third and long situation coming up. And if you're Arlington, that means time to bring some pressure again. And let's see, Braden says, more excited. We got McKinney just because we got rid of Aaron Jones. And so, <laughs> okay, bet, bet. But I tell you what, though, I don't know what Minnesota plan is at quarterback, but losing Kirk Cousins and I believe it was Sam Darnold that they acquired. I, I hope they have a plan. That's all I can say. I hope they have a plan. All right, but third and nine, shotgun, three seconds right now in the play clock, gets the snap in the pocket, throws over the middle, and that's completed again to Steinberger, who continues to move before they put him down on the ground there. And just seeing the tackle there reminds me, how are you guys feeling about the whole, you know, you're not able to do the hip drop tackle anymore? Do you guys like it? Do you feel like it's good for the game? How do you guys feel about that? Carmichael says Baltimore did all that just to get beat by Russell Wilson two more times. I saw two times this year. And so do you feel like Carmichael, Russell Wilson will remain the starting quarterback throughout the end of the season? Or do you think at some point Justin Fields will take over? Or do you prefer um, one over the other at quarterback, if it was your call. All right, shotgun feeds it to the back, picks up two yards on the carry, second down coming up. Again, first quarter with nine minutes, 35 seconds to go here in the first, and the score still 0-0. Zero, zero. But this is the Stallions' first time with the ball, football offensively. All right, so they line up in the shotgun. Back goes in motion. Quick pass. Caught. And, oh, wait. Was that picked off? Oh, no. That's a turnover. So he tried to do a quick pass to the receiver, and the receiver did touch it, but the ball was not perfect, and so he gave the defensive back an opportunity to rip it away from the receiver. And that's just a play right there where the, de the defensive back, he was ready for it. And when you have a situation like that, that simply means, hey, we're running too many short plays here. We should be running something deep to push the defense off if they're so close to where we're, we're having trouble running screen plays and stuff like that because the defense is just ready. And let's see, 
Carmichael says Sam Darn are going to be MVP next year. <laughs> that would be a bold statement, Carmichael. If that were to happen, then A, hey, like I, I would have to say I, I didn't see that coming. I didn't see that coming. Let's see. Carmichael says Russell Wilson, depending on how um, he plays, he'll probably start all games. And I would start Russell because of his experience and let Fields learn for a year. And so, all right, so I guess the question comes down to, do you feel that Russell Wilson was the problem for the Broncos last year or did the Broncos not use him correctly last year? And same for Justin Fields. Do you feel like it was just a lack of talent on the offensive line or how, how do you feel about that? And your boy Kenny Pickett now with the Eagles. So tell me, how do you really feel about Kenny Pickett as well? And again, we're currently right now at the commercial, so we're not missing anything at this time. When we come back, though, Arlington's defense got a turnover. So both defenses got turnovers to start off the season here on both the opening drives, one via interception in which Arlington, excellent job at the defensive back to fight for that football there. And prior to that, when the Stallions defensive line forced the fumble and on Perez and company. So we'll see what happens here. All right, meanwhile, while we have some time. All right, so let me put up the poll question here. Let's see. Carmichael says Kenny Pickett is trash. <laughs> no, you're talking about the guy who, well, that's true. And, and Mason Rudolph, didn't he go to the Tennessee Titans, if I'm not mistaken? I believe he went to the Tennessee Titans, if memory serves me right. All right, so poll question is up. And so, Seth, what's good with you, Seth? How are you doing? How are you? Carmichael says Mason Rudolph is a Titan now. And so, yeah, I mean, he had perhaps his best, I think his best season with the Steelers. And then all of a sudden, that's the year that it's, they're like, all right, time to move on. <laughs> all right, so here we go. Shotgun for Arlington from their own 41-yard line. Four receivers on the play. One running back receiver goes in motion. Gets the snap. Feeds it to the back and the back off the right guard. Picks up a yard on the play. It's going to make it second and nine. So both defenses, again, they came out here, made plays when they had to. And so now we're going to see who's going to get the first points of the game here. We're still first quarter, eight minutes, 45 seconds here. Still scoreless. Who's going to get the fireworks started this season? Seth says good. That's what's up, Seth. Talk to me, Seth. What's what's been going on with you? How's everything going? All right, shotgun here. Five seconds on the play clock. Gets the snap. Feeds it to the back up the middle, but the Stallions, they are ready for it. They're ready for it. Tell me, does anybody have their March Madness bracket? At least looking decent compared to the rest of the world there. Is anybody like happy with how their bracket has been going so far? And what do we think is going to happen with the remainder of, you know, college hoops for those who do watch college hoops and stuff like that? Who's going to win that championship? And so Phoenix, Phoenix, what's good with you? And so he says, JB Nation is back. Yes, we are back. It's been a long time coming, but we are back. How are you? All right, so third and eight, snaps it with a second on the play clock in the pocket, throws it, and what a nice completion there. And so I feel like everything so far has been kind of short passes, but that is nice. They're picked up at least 
about 14 yards there to Burnett, taking it all the way to about the Birmingham 43-yard line. So that was an excellent play. And you look at it, he was the inside receiver there, running that one towards the sideline. Excellent job there. Great concentration and a first down. Seth says, just watching my Orioles. And so that's right. Baseball is back and baseball is swinging out there. So, yes, Carmichael says your bracket is cooked. <laughs> Braden says mine was looking good until the Sweet 16 ended. And so, well, that's a lot further than I got, Braden. I think mine went back when the first 16 people stepped on the court and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, mine was really bad. I only did one bracket this year, but um, it was really bad. I'll tell you what, though. Kentucky is making too many early exits. Although I did not have them going far in my bracket because I figured they'd be a likely candidate to get put out. Purdue went further than I had them going because they're always getting knocked out. Let's see. Braden says, hope North Carolina State wins the whole tournament. Now, that would be something right there, Braden. That would be something. And how are we feeling about um, women's college hoops and stuff like that? They've been making some splashes this entire year and stuff like that. So how, how are we feeling about that? And again, we're currently right now at the commercial thanks to a TV timeout. And let's see, Carmichael says, you wanted Purdue to lose first round, and so... <laughs> Purdue typically does have their exits now. They do have their exits from time to time. I will say that. And if you're just tuning in right now, we haven't missed any offensive fireworks just yet. It's still 0-0, still the score right now. But hopefully we'll get some points here soon. Let's see. Braden says, same Carmichael. <laughs> he said, yeah, hope Iowa wins. But I don't see it happening. And so, hey, anything is possible. Anything is possible. You never know. You never know. And so Phoenix says, JB, will you stream Final Four or Finals? And so Phoenix, I actually would like to do that. That's not a bad um, idea. And so most likely um, I'll do that. It just depends, I guess, on the work schedule at that time. But certainly I'll aim to do that, especially Final Four and stuff like that. I'll try to sprinkle that in as well. I know I've missed the, you know, the, the, the fun part here, you know, like normally I'll get the, I'll cover the conference like championships and then the early parts as well. But this year has obviously been different than most for me, but I should be able to get that in as well. All right, so we're turning back to the action here and the Renegades. Can they find a way to get into the end zone here on this drive or with a Stallions defense? Make another big play here. I'll tell you what, though. As a Stallion fan, I am missing Bo Scarborough. It was just so great to have a power back like that, that just, you know, you knew especially early in the season before the offense got clicking that you can always count on him in the backfield. All right, feeds it to the back, and he tripped after picking up about three yards on the play. Tell me so far, what is the most underrated NFL offseason signing, in your opinion, the most underrated NFL signing that you guys, in your opinion, that took place so far this offseason? Right, meanwhile, out of the shotgun, they feed it up the middle again to the back here and making it third and short. And that's the key against the Stallion defense. They're keeping it third and short. You don't want it third down and long where they can just pin their ears back and get after you here. You want to make it third and short. And so far, Perez, you know, he is three of three for 30 yards passing so far in this one. We're here first quarter, six minutes and 30 seconds to go. Again, the score is still 0-0. Zero, zero. And let's see. Carmichael says, yeah, no, I don't want the Stallions to win. <laughs> Why the hate, Carmichael? It's a brand new league here. Why the hate? <laughs> let's let bygones be bygones. Three seconds here. They're going to go five wide. Snaps the ball. Perez looking. Throws it. Short. Completed. First down before he goes out of bounds. Picked up about four or five yards on the play. And once again, Burnett is the recipient of this play. So 
So excellent job. You spread him out with five wide. Make that move to the outside. He knew exactly where he was going to go when he snapped that ball. All right, but let's see. So far the poll, we've got seven votes in. Okay, and don't forget to make sure to press that like button as well here. And let's get this party rolling here. And Perez in the offense, shotgun here. Call the timeout, just didn't have enough time left right now to play clock here. So excellent job calling that timeout. Their first timeout called in this game. And so let's see, Carmichael says, JB, I don't forget the Maulers. And so let's see, Braden says, Carmichael will like this Russell Wilson. And so we will see how that goes there, Russell Wilson. One thing I will say, obviously, Russell Wilson coming in at the deal that he has just one year and stuff like that, extremely cheap. He knows that, you know, he has to go out there and perform. And he may not get another chance if he doesn't perform at a high level. Now, you look at the numbers last year. The numbers tell you that he looked okay. But I watched the film. I, I've seen the Dolphins versus the Broncos. I've seen the Broncos in a couple of games and stuff like that, especially early on. Russ would do good in the fourth quarter, but the first couple of quarters, it would not look good and stuff like that. So it was mostly like that garbage time type of stats until later in the season. Now, later in the season, he did start to play, I felt like, a little bit better overall but by that time Sean Payton had already just determined he just didn't like the guy at that point so but I do feel like he wasn't being used the best way possible for his you know like what he does well and so as long as Pittsburgh can replicate that and I believe that they will and stuff like that good things will happen let's see Braden says if, they, if he can play consistently with the Steelers they're going to be good and so they're going to want to continue to get, you know, some more um, weapons out there on the outside as well. But absolutely. Let's see. Carmichael says, JB, who do you think the Pats take at number three? I believe that the New England Patriots are going to end up taking Drake May at three. As much as I want Jaden Daniels, they're going to end up taking Drake May, I believe. Meanwhile, the running back picks up about five yards on the carry off the left, left side there. Excellent job there by the left tackle and left guard there to open that hole up there. So now you got a third and one situation. That's exactly what you want right there. But yeah, I believe it will be Drake May. It just, it just, I, I just feel that he is going to be a Patriot. But I tell you who it better not be. It better not be J.J. McCarthy. I know that much. It better not be him. I think he'll end up with like the Vikings or something like that. Or the Broncos, Vikings or Broncos. All right, let's see. Come back. So Steelers just need a quarterback. We're going to win a Super Bowl. You said I would put that seventy points on Russell. He doesn't play defense, and so that's true. That's true. But sometimes, sometimes when you got a bad defense, because I remember there was many times when Peyton Manning, you know, and he had like I remember around two thousand four, two thousand five. Coach defense was terrible and stuff like that, but they never got blowed out because when your offense is good and they hold the football, a good offense will help a bad defense look decent and stuff like that. But a bad offense will make a bad, an okay defense look way worse, especially when we're talking about the fact that they're always on the field. No defense should always be on the field that much to where an offense can put up 70 points. That tells me both the defense and the offense are both bad unless they're scoring in like 10 seconds and that and like it's a shootout. But if, it's, if that's not the case, that means the offense is going three and out way too many times or they're turning the ball over and stuff like that. So that's what that tells me if a team gets beat that badly and stuff like that. It's both sides of the ball. Sure, the defense will take the blame there, but the offense job is to at least hold the ball long enough for time of possession sake to where the other offense isn't just lighting it up. Let's see. Carmichael says, yeah, but the Broncos management is also trash. And so let's see. Come back says, I don't know if the commanders want an RG3 situation again. All right, so meanwhile, we got a 38-yard field goal attempt. And so, all right, so we got some points on the board here. So Arlington had to set up for three. And so they're up right now, 3-0. Okay. So we'll get another opportunity to hear see, to see Matt Corral, how will he respond after that last interception that he threw. Here in the first quarter with three minutes and eight seconds to go again. Arlington up three. Zero so far in this one. Phoenix says, JB, I'm happy you're back. Everyone hit that like. I appreciate that, Phoenix, and I'm happy to be back. I am happy to be back. Appreciate that. 
Absolutely. All right, so we are currently at the commercial, thanks to the score here. But yes, so much, I mean, we're that much more closer already to the draft and stuff like that. I mean, but man, so many situations out there. I tell you what, though, I was disappointed that my Patriots were not willing to open the the uh, wallet to bring in a top-tier wide receiver. We need a top-tier wide receiver, and we're ignoring it, completely ignoring it. All right. And again, we're at the commercial here. All right, so right now, Birmingham leading the poll, 62%. I like it. I like it. Let's see. Carmichael says, Juju Smith-Schuster is the past number one receiver. And so, yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you say it like that, Carmichael, oh, man. I am happy that we moved on from Devontae Parker. I mean, no offense to the guy personally, but – was terrible absolutely was terrible for us so we it was addition by subtraction getting rid of him I was glad that we brought Kendrick Bourne back I know he hasn't statistically done too much for us but he was definitely one of our better receivers it's just Bill to be honest Bill never liked him or at least you know both Bills Bill O'Brien Bill Belichick they didn't give him a chance to um, do what he can do I know that he at least has the skills and stuff like that so I am happy to see that we brought him back and stuff like that because he at least is a good solid third receiver and we just need to make sure that we keep the good people move on from the bad people that was so important Tom Michael says you like Devontae Parker the only way you can like Devontae Parker is if he never suited up for your team Carl Michael I mean believe me I'll tell you what though when it came to bets I did like taking the under on him he was a very good person to take the under on because he just did not perform at all Gets the catch at his own 15-yard line. Let's see what he does here. Look at him. Still moving here at the 40, 45, and goes at about, about the 50-yard line. So excellent return. You got to cash in here. And so I expect for Birmingham to utilize Marable in that backfield, but also continue to find guys like Steinberger and stuff like that. And let's see if we can take a deep shot here because it feels like Arlington is playing close. Can we take a deep shot and at least back up these DBs a little bit? Just a little bit. Let's see. Braden says, hey, JV, have Michigan fans been trashing, trash talking you since they won the championship? Actually, Braden, they have not at all, which is a bit of a shocker and stuff like that. They have not at all. But they did still our running back coach. So I, I, I'm not happy about that. Not happy about that. Uh, but that pass was incomplete. We got second and 10. Again, here in the first quarter, two minutes, 45 seconds to go. Arlington with the lead, 3-0. Stallions with the football here. So far, Matt Corral, 2 of 5 for 32 yards here. One interception. Gets the snap. Feeds it. No, faked it to the back there. But got back to the line of scrimmage. That is it. Third down coming up. Let's see. Carmichael says, you still don't like Mitchell Trubisky. And so, oh, man, Carmichael, you don't like any of your former quarterbacks and stuff like that. Right, so we got third down coming up here. Again, the shotgun. Two minutes to go here in the first. Three receivers, one tight end, one back. Five seconds on the play clock. Looking. Throws it. Gets the completion there. That's at least about a good 11 yards on the catch there. And that was, I believe that was Victor with the catch. Excellent job. First down. 
Let's see, Braden says that's surprising. And so I, I guess probably because I hadn't been streaming a lot since then, Braden. So maybe that might be why, actually. That might be. Let's see, Carmichael says, now nah, you liked Mason Rudolph. You say, but Mitchell and Kenny are trash. Pizza to Marable. And oh, what a nice hole up the middle. Able to get the first down there on the carry. Picked up about 12 yards there. And so now we're moving, but we got to come away with some points here. Protect the football. Protect the football. So important right now. Protect the football. All right. Feeds to the back of the middle. Let's see, Phoenix says, JB, you still got the mic skills. And so I appreciate that, Phoenix. And so, <laughs> yeah, I was wondering myself, I was like, it's been a little minute here. But honestly, I mean, it just comes natural, especially when it comes to football now. Oh, look at look at the moves here. And so Matt Corral says, hey, don't forget, I can run this rock here. What an excellent job there to maneuver up the middle and pick up that first down. And so, but yes, so far we've got nine votes in. Okay, Stallions here still leading the poll here. And so I need more of that from Matt Corral, but that's going to end the first quarter there. And so, and yeah, the reason I don't have the scoreboard up is that normally I'm able, it's easier when like a game is on ESPN so I can just have the scoreboard up top. But because of where the scoreboard is located here on Fox Sports this year, I can't necessarily get it at the top of where I normally have it there. So that's why I, I'm not showing the scoreboard, but I am trying to find a different way to see if I can find another way to get that up there for you guys so you can see the scoreboard. So I'm working through that on my end. Let's see, Carmichael says, Kenny had a chance to be QB1 here, and he said no, and now he's QB2 in Philadelphia, and he doesn't have a chance at QB1. And so, yes, I mean, honestly, if I'm going to say, hey, trade me somewhere else, I probably would have said, hey, you know, maybe the – Minnesota Vikings, can we call them and see if they're interested in me? If not them, then maybe call, you know, Denver and stuff like that. You know, go down the list, the Raiders as well. Somewhere where I would have had a chance to start. But to go there, Philadelphia, I will say this. You know, sometimes it does help a young quarterback to go and sit and watch, you know, a pro bowler and stuff like that. You know, sometimes there are benefits to that. Sometimes there are. You know, I remember and I remember when Michael Vick was in the league and when he came back and he was behind Donovan McNabb down there with Andy Reid, you know, and even though we knew Donovan McNabb, that was his team and stuff like that. But he went down there and eventually Michael Vick got the opportunity and we saw the best version of Michael Vick as a passer and stuff like that. Now, true, Andy Reid just has that effect and stuff like that. But Michael Vick was much better and more efficient, I should say during that time. And not just him. Um, I believe was it Nick Foles as well back then um, at that time. So, yeah. So, sometimes it does benefit, but you just better make sure that you're sitting where the quarterback coach that knows what he's doing, that can help you improve and not just sitting there and you're not improving. You got to improve. Got to improve. Heck, Geno Smith. I seen Geno Smith sit behind Eli Manning, heck, he's the reason that Giant fans got so mad because Gino got one start after Eli was playing like horrible for so long. So, but now he's a starter. Kenny just wasn't ready. Kenny wasn't ready. Let's see. Carmichael says Patrick Finn going to be the best middle linebacker in the league. And so I do like his skill set. And I feel like he's still, you know, is going to continue to get better. So I, I do like that. I do like that. I'll tell you what, though. Hollywood Brown going to the Chiefs, that's a big opportunity for him. He can stay healthy and stuff like that. That's going to be a big opportunity for him. Meanwhile, 10 votes. We've got five for the Stallions. And five for the Renegades here. Okay. Keep them votes coming in. Keep the votes coming in. Again, right now, Renegades up three to zero here. But let's see to start the second quarter here. 
Can Birmingham find a way to get into the end zone? We're in the red zone, but we got to get into the end zone here. But let's not forget Matt Corral. He is mobile here. So if he doesn't see anything, I would try something for Steinberger. But if it's not there, take off and run. First and go. Feeds it to the back, up the middle. Picks up about two yards on the carry. Second and goal coming up. Corral's three of six for 44 yards so far in this one. Zero touchdowns and one interception earlier in this one. And so, RC, your aces and Hawkeyes guy, what's good with you? The moment we've been waiting for. And RC says, yo, I don't know what you're covering, but I have to come through and holler at my boy JB. And so, yes, just covering a little UFL here. Again, their first official UFL game since the merger of the USFL and XFL here. So absolutely tremendous so far. And I like the fact that we got a lot of talent. It's very evident that we got a lot of talent. But RC, talk to me. Women's college hoops, they've been going off in the best way possible. So break it down for us. How does this play out the rest of the way and stuff like that? And man, tell me, like, give me your top five players right now in women's hoops in order, if you don't mind, RC, since I know this is something that you cover on a regular basis and stuff like that. And RC, Braden, and everybody who's got their own channel, how has the growth been on your channels lately? when it comes to new subscribers. I will say I was extremely shocked that as long as it took for me to get back to this um, live stream, and I, I thought I anticipated that more people would have, you know, had unfollowed by then. But the fact that I had only lost two um, subscribers during that time, I was just like, wow, you know, I, I appreciate that. And let's see, Phoenix says, JB Nation, I gotta go. Enjoy, um, everyone enjoy your Saturday. Appreciate you for coming through, Phoenix. And yes, you take care. And looking forward to seeing you next time. Your boy will be streaming again tomorrow. I believe that'll be 3 o'clock Eastern time. Meanwhile, Matt Corral just moving around, trying to just extend the play here. But overall, ends up throwing the ball out of bounds. But hey, sometimes the best play is to know when to throw the ball away and not to force it. You know, all you can do is move around Give your guys some time. But if it's not there, then that's what you do. But, yeah, looking at that. Ah, oh, he, he, I feel like he could have got the guy that was towards the end near the power line there perhaps. But let's go out there and get that field goal attempt in there. Let's try to tie this thing up. And let's see. RC says, JB, I saw a notification earlier, but I was on the phone and watching the LSU-UCLA Bruins women's Sweet 16 game. How did that one play out? And you say, JB, man, I tell you both of my teams could be in or out after today. You, Oh, man. That's a lot of pressure right there when both teams have high state games. You say UCLA versus LSU, and then Iowa plays Colorado next. Ooh, that's going to be a matchup there. And say, Phoenix says, true subscribers never go away. And so facts. Phoenix out here spitting facts. Absolutely appreciate it. Braden says, hey, RC. Absolutely. But, yeah, this is a good time here. It's great to have some form of football. Obviously, we got the NFL draft coming up as well. Obviously, the draft is huge for us and stuff like that. And your boy plans on, you know, streaming the draft and stuff like that. I'll do my best to try to get through all three, but I should be able to. Just a matter of, you know, unless work comes up with some type of big project, but I should be able to. And let's see. Braden says, hope Iowa wins today. And so I do hope that Iowa wins and stuff like that. I do. I feel like it's it's important right now that we do have as much success as possible for all the big names in the sport. Because right now, like, they've got a lot of big names there. It goes beyond Caitlin Clark and stuff like that. But it's a, it's a good time. It's a good time. It is a good time. So absolutely love it. Let's see. RC says, JB, it's halftime just right now. You say UCLA 28 and defending champs 34. I got to throw that in there. Okay, okay, okay. 
Well, that's nice. That's a good competitive game there. A good competitive game there. All right, and again, we are currently right now at the commercial here. With the score three to three, Stallions kick the field goal to tie it up. And so who's going to get us our first touchdown here? That's what I need to know. Who's going to get us our first touchdown? Let's see. RC says, JB, man, what's your thoughts on the Justin Fields bad Bears and Steelers trade? You say Steelers got Fields bad for her an Amazon gift card. <laughs> Honestly, I like the trade for Justin Fields. Now, I'm going to focus on him because he went to Ohio State. I'm an Ohio State fan. So down there in Chicago, it was brutal. It was absolutely brutal. They turned this man into a running back. He was not like that at college and stuff like that. But a bad offensive line will force you to be quick and then just start take off and stuff like that. And then when you notice you're not having success as a passer, they didn't have the pieces around to, you know, help him. Now, what I like about his situation in Pittsburgh, stability and stuff like that. You know, having a coach, Mike Tomlin, who's been there for a while and stuff like that, um, it gives him an opportunity to just be with a coach who you know, like, this is the guy and stuff like that. You don't have to worry about, you know, next year, you know, assuming they go out there and do well and stuff like that, you know, he'll, he'll most likely be back and stuff like that. So you have a culture in place and stuff like that. Second, being behind Russell Wilson is going to help him more than starting over Russ because it's going to give him an opportunity to really just, you know, soak it all in, you know, first learn the playbook and stuff like that. Take your time and stuff like that. Then just learn, you know, get acclimated there. It may not show up year one, and stuff like that, you know. But the Steelers, they showed that they tried to do the same thing with Dwayne Haskins, you know, RIP and stuff like that. But it was good for him in that situation as well. So for Justin Fields, we may not see it this year, but next year I think will be a good opportunity for him to take over and we'll see a new version of Justin Fields better than what we saw in Chicago. It would not have happened in Chicago, I do not think, because they would not have put the weapons around him. Meanwhile, feeds it to the back, off the right side, picks up three yards on the carry, going to make it second and seven here for the Arlington Renegades here. Here in the second quarter with 12 minutes, 15 seconds to go. And Eric, what's good with you, Eric? Eric says, hey, talk to me, Eric. What's new with you? How are you doing? And please, everybody in the chat, if you've had something significant happen to you and stuff like that, that's good. And you don't mind sharing. Let us know. Let us know. Let us know. I know it's been a minute since we've all gathered here, so certainly let us know. Three seconds here on the play clock. Shotgun. Perez. Feeling the pressure. Throws it to the running back. Excellent job here. Just got to make somebody miss, and he does. And he gets the first down here. Pushed out of bounds. 11 minutes and 40 seconds to go here in the second quarter. We're all tied up three to three right now. Let's see. RC says, JB, Caitlin Clark will be going to the WNBA and she will be getting selected by the Indiana Fever. And so, well, that, any team that's fortunate enough to get Caitlin Clark, that's a big W right there. You're getting a game changer and stuff like that. Who's going to literally change the game? and stuff like that. So I'm excited for her. I'm, I'm excited for her. JV is a big fan. Let's see. RC says, JV, I thought you would come back calling some Yankees baseball. I don't know why either. <laughs> that would not be the case. That would not be the case. I mean, <laughs> that would not be the case. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I think the closest that we would get from JB realistically when it comes to baseball, it would have to be something like maybe the home run derby or something like that to where it doesn't require a lot of skills and knowledge on my end and stuff like that. That would probably be the closest that we would get, something like that. Let's see. Eric says, we are roll here. This, absolutely. 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 You say we got great news the other day. Okay. About my mom. You say um, that was the best cancer test result yet. And so 
Definitely, we love great news right there, Eric. Absolutely, there prayer sent there for sure. But that is good news there to get the best, you know, news test results yet. And I'm hoping that things continue to get even better, Eric. Absolutely, appreciate you for sharing. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's see. RC says Indiana is only like two hours. Um, actually less away from me. You say, I'm definitely going to check out some games. And so, oh, for sure, for sure. And so for me, although I'm not a not a big baseball person and stuff like that, I just haven't, you know, really been taught the ins and outs and stuff. But for me, Tampa Bay, the, uh, I'm sorry, the, the Rays, they, they're, they're my team. It's a team that I chose. And my reason that I chose them is that the only baseball video game I ever chose. They had the worst record that year. I think it was going back to like 2009. And so since my other teams were like at the top, I was like, let me pick a team that was not at the top. And man, how times have changed. But um, oh, come on, Perez. You had a guy beat him. I didn't see him though. I didn't get the ball to him. But all right, so here we go. And this hard fought three to three game where you bring your whole defense here. Total yards, Birmingham 81, Arlington 78. Two seconds on the play clock. I got to snap the ball. Birmingham sitting pressure. Perez throws it. And oh, he tried to do behind the behind the shoulder pass here, but he was off. He was off on that one. Receiver wanted a penalty there, but your quarterback's at least got to make it a little bit closer. But that's his first incompletion thrown so far in this one. He is six of seven for 44 yards here. If he can just avoid the pressure and stuff like that, Perez has been doing a good job just getting the ball out and staying within his means here. Nine minutes and 20 seconds to go here in the second quarter. Again, all tied up three to three. Eric says, we are fighters in my family. You say when I was born, I was two pounds and two ounces. Now, 42 years later, we are still here. And so, got to love the fight. And that's what it takes. You know, that's what it takes in this well. And oh, oh, my goodness. We have a touchdown. Pass. Wow. Caught, caught him sleeping. Caught JB laughing as well here. Wow, I did not expect that. Now, they did have that earlier on this drive. It was there. So, like, that had to be something that they identified and said, hey, let's attack this again. That deep ball was there. And so they found a weakness. So now Birmingham is going to have to adjust there because that's just too many times in a row. And you look at this replay here in which Perez, first of all, excellent job there by the office line, gave him a pocket to where he can step up. And then from there, he just floats it up there away from the DBs and stuff. And it looks like they're almost moonwalking out there, how slow they, they were. He was all by himself. And now the point after touchdown play. Looks like they're lined up for the two-point play here. And again, the two-point play is at that five-yard line. So they want to get two. Let's see if they're going to be successful or not. Eric says touchdown. And so, yes, the two-point attempt here. Perez up under center. I'm sorry, that's not Perez. Quarterback looking, throws it. Oh, what a nice play. What a nice play. Wow. And that was, that was Scott. Okay, so that was Scott there on the play. But excellent job there. That's, that's the team fired up right there. That's how you get the first touchdown of the UFL season right there. So the Renegades with the touchdown. They're up 11-3 to three here in the second quarter with nine minutes and one second to go. Birmingham, it's time for us to respond. Absolutely. And 13 votes right now. And I see that Arlington is up on the poll. We've got a 14 vote and that one went to the Stallions. OK, OK, bet, bet, bet. And let me know your favorite team in a UFL in the chat, guys. Let me know your favorite team in the zone. What's good with you? What's good with you? How are you doing? My guy, yes. Oh, man, talk to me, man. Talk to me about the Minnesota Vikings, man. What needs to be done for the Minnesota Vikings? Let me know a couple of things that you believe need to be done for your Minnesota Vikings to get to the place where you want them to be at for this upcoming season. Whether that's through the draft, free agency with what's left, heck, a trade as well, let me know. But glad to see you here. I know it's been a minute.
And again, we're at the commercial here. Renegade scored a touchdown and got the two-point play. And so they're up 11-3 to three right now. So now it's up to the Birmingham Stallions, which last time out there, Birmingham, they got in the red zone, but they had to set up for three points here. Got to be able to come away with touchdowns in a big game like this. The difference between three points and six points, seven points, eight points, however many points, that could, that could be the difference between winning and losing. And seeing as though says quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. So tell me, let's just assume, you know, the first three quarterbacks that every, the, the top three that everybody talks about, they're not available and stuff like that. So obviously, you know, Jaden Daniels not available, Drake May not available, you know, um, Caleb Williams, th those guys not available. So let's assume that. Give me rank for me the next three quarterbacks if you guys went via the draft and stuff like that, which I would assume. Rank for me an order from the one that you want the most to, you know, like your remaining two as well. Heck, if you want to give me your top five, if you like five guys, great. But if you only like three, give me your top three in order that you want the Minnesota Vikings to take and all that. I know J.J. McCarthy is going to be one on your board right there, but who's next? Is it um, Michael Penix Jr. perhaps? Is he next? Any love for Bo Nix out there? You know, let me know the order of the quarterbacks that you have remaining for who you feel like would be a good fit for your Minnesota Vikings. Because sometimes it's about fit. You know, we, we like these guys and stuff like that, but sometimes it comes down to do they fit what we're trying to run, what we need from them and stuff like that. Let's see, Enzo says, I don't know. You, you think Williams might fall? Well, beyond, I feel like if he does fall, do we think he'll fall more than three spots, though? If he does fall? I mean, I'm not going to lie. The news has not been this bad for a quarterback coming out since – when I, I guess since Aaron Rodgers was in the draft and then they somehow talked him out of being the first pick of the draft and talked up Alex Smith and then I seen Aaron Rodgers fall and stuff like that for whatever reason back then. But um, I haven't seen a quarterback di this much. I know we need stuff to talk about, but man, he is just stumbling without, you know, just, just stumbling, just stumbling. All right, so let's see. Okay, okay. Jaden Daniel, okay. Let's see, JJ, Phoenix, Knicks. Okay, okay. I'm hoping, I personally hope that for specifically for Michael Penix Jr., I would love to see him end up going to a situation like, say, Seattle, where you have like great receivers and stuff like that. Just a place that has great receivers. Because if he has great receivers, it'll help him. But if he doesn't have any receivers, then we're not going to see what we saw from him at Washington. All right, first and 10, feeds to the back, fighting forward there. He's going to be about three yards shy of that first down marker. Picked up seven yards, and that's person on the carry. I believe that's his first carry of the game. Eight minutes and 45 seconds to go. They want to hurry up now, get some tempo. I like it. We got to up the tempo here. And as O says, not a May fan. Speaking of May fan... Oh, man, what's good with you? Wait a second. Did the ball come out? No, nah, he's down. That's the first down here. Oh, it says, in the zone, how we doing? And so, but yes, absolutely. Oh, man, give me your top five quarterbacks in the draft as well. In order. In order. So just not even, you know, just for the Patriots, like just in, in general, your top five quarterbacks. If you had that first pick and you were ranking these quarterbacks, how would you rank them, Ole? All right, so, oh, wow, look at that. Excellent run there for the quarterback to keep it himself up the middle. I can't tell you how many times we saw that be successful last year, and that was Martinez who's in the game right now for Birmingham. I like what I'm seeing so far. Adrian Martinez and stuff like that. Wow. Again, Kansas State there. 2022, I remember the kid at college. He definitely can move. So I like the quarterbacks that we got. We do a good job of bringing in some talent, just about making it flow for us. But five wide here, seven minutes and 18 seconds to go here in the second with Arlington up 11 to three. Gets the snap, but before that, there is a penalty right now. Cannot have a penalty. Let's see, Nazo says, my guy, I appreciate you watching my live the other night, old man. And so, hey, that's what's up. Oh, it says, no problem. You definitely know your stuff and cool dude, like JV said. Got to support people like you and JV. And so I appreciate that as well. Absolutely, yes. 
Yes. Absolutely. That's the end of Zoe says. I don't think Caleb going number one. And so definitely there's a lot of stuff out there for sure. For sure. And so it'll be interesting to go. I guess for me, I'm hoping he goes number one because that means that we won't have to make that decision and stuff like that. And I trust them as far as I can see them when it comes to who to take. So I'm like, don't even put that on the board for us. Meanwhile, Martinez doing what he does so well. Look at him walk the rope on the sideline there. Picked up the first down in the process. He's out here moving. I like it. I like it. I like it. A nice spark here for the offense. Faked it to the back that time. Was in the pocket and just made it do what it do. They're going to have to keep a spy on him because he will move around. That's just what he does. He's got two rushes already for 31 yards. Now we're here in a second with six minutes and 25 seconds to go. And Stallion's down by eight. Shotgun formation. Five seconds on the play clock. Snaps it. Looking. Throws it. Incomplete. Incomplete. Second and ten coming up. Birmingham wants a penalty. Referee says uh, not, not happening. Not happening. Absolutely. Because if the Bears end up Going with Jaden Daniels is going to make me mad because I really want Jaden Daniels. And I'm really hoping, really, really, really hoping that somebody messes up and let this kid slides to us. But if not him, then Drake May. One of those two, I need it. It cannot be Caleb Williams. It just cannot be. Two seconds on the play clock. Snaps it. Look in. Throws it. Incomplete. Incomplete. Try to throw it over the middle. Incomplete. Third down coming up. So now you got yourself a third and long situation here. And what you want is at least if that first read here, and if it's not there, Martinez, you take off and make it do what it do. Let's see. And as says, I think Bears take May. So you think they're going to go Drake May? Okay. Okay. That would be interesting there. I mean, the fact that we're able to have these debates about, you know, different quarterback and stuff. I remember a couple of years ago, I think when Jacksonville had the first pick of the draft and stuff like that, and they ended up taking the kid from Georgia and stuff like that. That was the most controversial I ever seen about who's going to be the first pick. Was it going to be him? Was it going to be Hutchison and stuff like that? I thought Hutchison was going to be the first pick, but Detroit ended up taking him after that, which worked out great for them and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, it's a lot of controversy at the top, which makes for great conversation. Let's see. O says, in the zone, that would hurt my soul. I'll be fine if they took Jaden Daniels or Williams. Same for the Commanders. I expect the Commanders to get it wrong. So if Williams does fall to the Commanders, there's no way the Commanders are going to pass on that. An opportunity to make a better mistake? Absolutely. Let's see. In the zone says, wait, you don't like Williams, but you like poor pocket presence, May? <laughs> All right, so here we go. Excellent job there by the defense. It's going to make it second down, coming up second and 10. Let's see, O says, for me, I think Drake May is the perfect fit for New England. Sit behind you, cover Brissett, and learn. Good old Brissett. Throws it. Incomplete. And that will create a third and long situation here. Just a bad pass here. So Martinez so far, I mean, I love his mobility, but these passes, we got to get these passes. Got to get these passes. This is the situation where I really miss having Bo Scarborough back there because Bo would, would consistently – go out there and get us a good four or five yards of carry and stuff like that, and then just continue to pound the defense in a game like this, especially early in the season when we tend to struggle a little bit more passing the ball until we get things going as the season goes on. I guess the snap, looking, throws it. Oh, he threw an interception. He threw an interception. He overthrew the guy. What is he doing? Coach, take him out. Take him out. He's okay for a couple plays, but 
He's not it when it comes to passing the ball. Martinez, bruh. Has he been practicing at all? Braden says that was a bad throw. It was a terrible throw. O says if Drake May is gone, Pat should trade back, load up on picks, and get either Rattler or go Dak next year. So, oh, man, not, not the Rattler one. O says that was a horrible pass. It was. It was a horrible pass. I cannot deny it. It hurts me to say it. That's a fact. That was a horrible pass right there. I mean, he had a guy. If that passes on the money and all like that, I believe that's a completion, but he overthrew him badly. That, that was terrible. And so that's going to send us to the commercial. And right now, Renegades are up 11-3, and after that turnover, they will get the football, and we'll see if they're able to repeat the success they had last time out there when they were able to put it together for a touchdown and then the two-point play. All right, but we got 16 votes right now, eight for the Stallions, eight for the Renegades. Okay. Now tell me this, when it comes to this NFL draft class coming up, which position excites you the most about this upcoming draft class and which position scares you the most when it comes to this upcoming draft class? Like, I'll throw that out there. Like for me, I love the, the depth at receiver. I feel like whether you go receiver first round, second round, third round, you can find some gems. We, we've got some dogs out there at receiver. We've got a lot of good receivers in this upcoming draft, I feel like. And so that's going to help the value of being for teams that need to, like my Patriots, get some receivers later on and stuff like that. But the guys at the top, we're talking potentially, you know, like I hate to put that kind of a pressure on a kid, but we're talking about a couple of guys that I know that's going to just go out there and just ball out throughout their careers and stuff like that at that receiver position. Let's see, and Azo says, I'll say quarterbacks scare you. And so, okay, okay, okay. I can understand that. I can understand that. I mean, certainly you look at it. I mean, when it comes to quarterbacks, they can make or break your franchise. And if you get someone that you believe he's one thing, but then he goes out there and completely shows the kid just doesn't have what it takes and stuff like that, I mean... A lot of the quarterbacks I do hear being, you know, thrown out there like, you know, I'll just say Bo Nix and stuff like that. Not a lot of people are too high on him despite his success that he had at the collegiate levels and stuff like that. Braden says wide receiver has so much depth this year. And Braden says, I don't know if you ever watched him, JV, but what do you think of destroying being um, in the UFL? And so I, I have not watched him, so I got to definitely check him out. Let's see. All right, so we are back here. Arlington moving the ball under three minutes here to go before the half. And Perez, he's been looking solid. You know, as long as you give him time, he's been, do he's been doing what he needs to do. He's eight of nine, 104 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. He's not forcing anything, but he is finding it. When that deep ball was there, he found that touchdown there. He's playing it smart. He's playing his game out there. Now, from their own 35-yard line, feeds it to the back. Picks up a yard or two. All right, let's see. Oh, it says tackle and then scare me is – um okay, so you say tackle and then the scare me is the running back. So there's a couple of guys I like, but other than that, I would say staying away from running backs and definitely not taking a running back in the first three rounds and stuff like that. So absolutely. I mean, I prefer any ways to get my running back in at least around – the fifth, sixth, or seventh round and stuff like that at this point because there's so many other positions to take. Let's see, O says, Brayton, I'm happy for him. 
Maybe you can get into the NFL. Let's see. Braden says, same old man. Hope he uh, makes it to the NFL. All right, but right now, two minutes here before we get to halftime. And so far, Renegades up 11-3 here. I need my Stallions to wake up here. Got to do a better job of – we are moving the ball, but we got to finish drives. And so we cannot be passing like that. Like, I love the mobility that Martinez brings. I just wish that with his mobility – we can have a little bit more of Matt Corral's passing and stuff like that, which says a lot because, yeah, that, that, was, that was a terrible throw out there, terrible throw. But we'll see if the Renegades can capitalize off the opportunity. All right, meanwhile, let me just see something here. And again, we're right now we're currently at the commercial here. Hmm. All right, so getting ready to return back here. Two minutes before halftime. The difference in rushing yards there, but ultimately it's Arlington here that's been able to capitalize off that last touchdown. Let's see what they do here. Quick pass, completed, solid catch. Picked up about seven, eight yards on the catch. And that makes life easier for second down, second and short. But they got a minute and 48 seconds to go. Hurrying up to the line. Has to avoid the rush. On the move, looking, throws it. Oh, incomplete. Now, if he would have completed that, if he would have completed that, y'all, I would have been like, that's crazy. That, that would have been an insane play. But excellent job moving around. And just avoiding the pass rush there, third and seven, third and two. And because of the work that you put in on first down, now you've got a manageable situation here on third down. We'll see what they call. Again, Perez, 9 of 11 for 112 yards, passing one touchdown, no interceptions. Eight seconds right now on the play clock, shotgun formation, five wide. See the offensive line to give us some time here. Snaps it, throws it, incomplete, incomplete. Threw it there, incomplete. Excellent job there by the Stallions to create fourth down here, fourth and two. All right, so it's going to bring up the punt unit. Punts the ball, a minute 28 to go in the second quarter. Catch it from his own five. He's at the 10. Got to make some guys miss here, but goes down to about the 15-yard line, and that's exactly where the Birmingham Stallion will take over with the football trailing 11-3 to here in the second quarter with a minute and 20 seconds to go.
All right, so here we go. Second time out called here. Let's see, O says, we got some good games today. And so, yes, yes. All right, so here we go. First and 10, five wide. And he's trying to run that time, brought down there, second down coming up. And again, Martinez, he is one of five passing for 13 yards and an interception so far in this one. We got a minute left to go here before halftime. Throws it in the middle, gets the completion here, takes it to the 30. Got to hurry up, got to hurry up. Needed to get that first down there. 51 seconds. Directing traffic here. Again, five wide again. Shotgun. Gets the snap for 45 seconds. He's looking to run. He's running. He's running. Still running. Takes it all the way to midfield. Okay, okay. Timeout. He's getting up kind of slow now. He's definitely in some pain here. Oh, and this is leg, yeah. All right, medical staff will be looking at Martinez here. What an excellent run that was. And let's see the replay here. All right, 17 votes right now. So the Stallions back leading the poll. That makes JB happy. Okay. Meanwhile, Martinez limping towards the sideline. Hope he'll be okay. So in comes, once again, Matt Corral. We're just not a bad move. We need passes for sure. 40 seconds here before halftime. So you've got 40 seconds to work with here. I need smart passes off the line, give him time. Let's make it do what it do. Old says, JB leveled up with the setup. You think you're going to be on live for the draft? And so, absolutely, I, I believe I'll be up for the draft and stuff like that. And so, I'm looking forward to it. I know I got a lot of research to do between now and then because I haven't just been able to. But absolutely, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, look at that. Matt Corral says, I can run too. Don't forget that. Picked up about eight, nine yards there before you slide. 28 seconds here. 25 seconds. Time just coming off the clock. You got two timeouts, but time is just coming off the clock. And you wasted an extra like five seconds when you could have been immediately called a timeout. Those five seconds are critical here. What are we doing? What are we doing? This is insane. All right, so they put two more seconds back on the clock. Okay. So 25 seconds here. I mean, all you at least want is a shot at least at least at a field goal here. But whatever you do, don't turn the ball over. Do not turn the ball over. Let's see. Oh, it says, this is the most important draft of the past in 20 years, in my opinion. They need to hit on quarterback, receiver, and left tackle in the first three rounds and stuff like that. I agree. It's critical. It's it's. It's so, so critical. Like, this is Gerard Mayo's job right here. If we get this wrong, he won't get to stay long enough to get it right. He has to have a promising draft here. Now, I'm not saying it's got to look like what Houston did last year. But at the same time, it's got to be something relatively close.
because I'm expecting any quarterback that's taken is going to have to sit out the entire year one and stuff like that. But the others have to show some type of promise. I am happy that we brought back Kendrick Bourne. Oh, I am happy about that. That was an underrated move. I didn't think he'd want to come back, but I'm glad he does. So I was happy about that. I was happy about shipping away Devontae Parker. I would have done it myself if I had the chance. That would probably been the first thing I would have done. Him, Trent Brown, it, it had been gone before I even put my suitcase down, honestly. All right, second and one here in the shotgun. Gets the snap. Moving, throws it, incomplete, overshot his receiver there. But more importantly, left 20 seconds there on the clock. So now we got third and one here. Got one timeout. All right, two seconds on the play clock, snaps the ball, looking, moving around, still looking, throws it off the back foot, and it's incomplete. Just threw it up there in coverage, just incomplete. Great job by the defense, and that's going to bring up fourth down and one. Let's see, Old says, I'm so happy Trent Brown, Mac Jones, and Parker are gone. And stuff. Oh, yeah. Mac Jones going to Jacksonville and stuff like that. Hopefully, I mean, honestly, it might sound crazy, but if he can go there, learn and stuff like that, who knows? Trevor goes down, get an opportunity. You never know. You look at the numbers between those two guys, it's not as different as you would think and stuff like that in terms of career numbers and stuff like that. So hopefully, he'll just learn. He needs to learn. He needs to restore his confidence. He needs to restore his confidence. So happy for him. More, more importantly, happy for us. Oh, it says, well, JB, I'll be here if you go live for the draft. And if you need any help on the players, let me know. I've been doing a lot of research this draft. And so, yeah, I'm thinking, like, if you're good with it, old, um, just like last, well, two years ago and stuff like that, you know, both of us can be um, live here and stuff like that. And then that'll help me out a lot because I know there's a lot of research for me to do and stuff like that. And then I'll see, um, I believe that, and the Zoe is actually going to probably be at the draft, or not, if I'm not mistaken. If you're still here in the Zoe, um, confirm that with me or not. But I think you mentioned being at the draft and stuff like that. So I might get a third person with us as well. But we'll, we will certainly see about that. But it's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time. And it's so important. So important. So important. And this year, we don't have to wait long for our pick. Oh, throws it into the end zone. Oh! Oh, my goodness. He actually threw a touchdown. Wow. To Deion Kane. Wow. What a play. What a play. O says, let me know, JV. You already know. You said I got nothing going on during the draft. And so, yeah, that, that'll, be, that'll be a good idea there. Definitely the two of us and stuff like that. You know, that three-day mission, as you remember, two years ago and stuff like that. That, that was a lot of time there, but it was fun. It was fun and stuff like that. So, absolutely. Man, what a play. What a play. Now, how do you let that happen as a defensive back? I have no idea, but I am happy that it did happen. So now, the Stallions with an opportunity to try to tie this up right before the half, just when you thought that they were not going to get a touchdown before the half, they came in punching. I look for Steinberger here on something. Let's see. Throws it to the back. Gets it. Got to make somebody miss. Goes airborne. That's good. That's good, man. I don't know how he did it. I thought he was going to be short, but he got it. And we're all tied up. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. 11. 11. Let's go. Insane. Absolutely insane. Wow.
Yeah, you look at that replay there. He put it all on the line there. That time, just said, I'm going to go airborne, and I'm going to get this. I love when a player goes all out like that. Braden says, Deion Kane having a game today. Yes. O says, yes, sir. It was crazy three days, but definitely fun. And so, yes. So make sure that you're ready for that. Oh, you know, stock up and stuff like that because your boy was going through a whole bunch of gummy bears and stuff and all like that at that time. So stock up for that moment. Absolutely. So I remember, like, I think that was the one where we had, like, the, um, what was it, Chavon Walker, was it? That was the first pick for the um, Jags that year, that year, two years ago, if memory serves me right. Let's see. I'll tell you this, opener game, you could not ask for anything better for an opener game than to have it tied right now 11 to 11, and we're about to go into halftime. Unless, of course, these returns, you, know, you never know when these returns. We've seen both teams have tremendous returns that took it from midfield. So with three seconds here, let's see what they do for the kickoff. All right, so getting ready for the kickoff here. Kickoff. Squib kick. Gets it at about the 29. Still running. Brought down. No time remaining. And that's going to take us to halftime, folks, with the score. Birmingham, 11. Arlington, 11. We are all tied up in this one. We've seen a little bit of everything. We've seen turnovers. We've seen mistakes. We've also seen both teams get into the end zone and get the two-point play here. We've seen mobile quarterbacks. We've seen just about it all. Let's see. Braden says, I remember we were waiting for Carson Strong to get drafted. I remember, Braden. Why'd you make me remember that, Braden? I I remember we were so confused and lost. We didn't know why he didn't get drafted and stuff like that. It, it was insane. Like the, the watch for him was insane. It was a disrespect. I felt a certain disrespect for the kid, you know? Oh, man, I forgot about Carson Strong. Let's see. Oh, it says, definitely we'll have the snacks and the extra phone battery. He said, Brady, for real, I was so wrong about him. Let's see. Brady says, same old man. I thought he was going to be good. And so that's the thing, you know, that's the thing when it comes to the draft. That's what you love so much. You think you know, but you don't really know 100% and stuff like that. But you think you know. And then late in the round when somebody, you know, like day three, you hear a guy get drafted and then you're like, all right, who's that kid and all like that? Then all of a sudden, he turned out to be a star and all like that. I wish, I wish, I really do wish that Malik Cunningham was still with the Patriots and stuff like that. I feel like with Jermot, with Jermot Mayo being a coach and stuff like that, that at least, you know, we would get a better look at what he could do, like in a preseason at quarterback and stuff like that. Just, you know, for the extra depth and stuff like that. And then maybe some occasional plays. He could have been used a lot better. I was really excited about Malik Cunningham last year as a prospect, and I still believe that he, you know, has that some that it factor that not everybody has in terms of just, you know, I'm not saying consistently going out there and being, you know, quarterback one or anything like that. You know, the kid's still raw in terms of talent, but the potential, the potential from what I've seen and stuff like that. He, he can run, but he can also throw on the run and stuff like that with some good accuracy, underrated in that um, aspect. So... 
Disappointed that we didn't take advantage of the opportunity with him last year. Hopefully, if we get our hands on another prospect like that this year, we'll do better, I hope. Let's see, Brandon says, I'm going to do, you're going to be doing your draft prospect videos again. And so, hey, that's what's up. That's what's up. O says, I'll definitely look out for that, Braden. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Great times, great times. Let's see. Let me see what this is. Is there any way to pull up the scoreboard? Let's see. Braden says, appreciate it, old man. I already got a bunch up on YouTube. Let's see. O says, JB, the good thing about this offseason, a lot of people have seen crafts are cheap and are calling them out. Plus, they made Bill look like the worst person ever. I hate how they did that for Bill. You know, like, how can you, for someone who feel how you feel about him and stuff like that, you know, but the fact is, how many times do we see great quarterbacks, you know, um, they don't win championships and stuff like that because as great as they are and stuff like that, their coach just wasn't able to either keep the team focused or help out the defense to help them out. But Bill did his job. He kept them focused. He had discipline. That was the difference between the Pats back then and Carmichael, you might want to cover your ears. The Steelers back when they had the big three, you know, A, B, Big Ben, and, and LeDavion, um, I'm sorry, and, um, and Bell and stuff like that. It's because the Steelers had no discipline, but Bill kept the Pats disciplined and stuff like that. You knew if you stepped out of line and stuff, then you weren't going to get to play. Now, over time and stuff like that, you know, as humans, we don't like that long term and stuff like that. That's always going to be a problem and stuff like that long term when it comes to that type of stuff. But ultimately, because um, when I think about, you know, like you, you think about the Jackson Five and stuff like that, I know nothing to do with sports and stuff like that, you know, I feel like the discipline that they have from Joe Jackson helped them reach their potential. But once you reach your potential, you lose the appreciation for that discipline. And then you're like, hey, I don't need that anymore and stuff like that. And that's kind of what it was for the past dynasty. You know, sure, we can look at the last like five years of the actual dynasty and be like, hey, that's all Tom Brady. I won't argue with that there. He carried us at that point. But to get to that point, to get to that level, Bill was extremely critical in getting to that. You know, his experience that he had with the Giants and stuff like that, being a part of, you know, that winning culture and stuff like that, the discipline and the mindset that it took, that came a long way. Because other than that, like, forget, well, first of all, the whole tuck rule, we, we know how that played out. But that aside, you don't get to that point and stuff like that, you know, to where we beat the Rams in that first Super Bowl without Bill Belichick's defense, keeping the greatest offense in the league that year asleep for about three quarters before they woke up. So I give Bill that one and stuff like that. And then the, the Rams and Patriots Super Bowl again, the one in which Todd Gurley, in which honestly if Todd Gurley was not injured, we probably don't win that one. But at that point, the wheels were already deflating at that point, you know, so – but I give Bill credit for that. You know, Bill's X's and O's. Nobody made in-game adjustments better than Bill Belichick did. And that was huge. You think about how great Peyton Manning was when he was out there breaking records and stuff like that for Indianapolis. The defense was terrible and stuff like that. Now, they had tremendous offensive weapons and stuff like that. But defensively, they were not that good except for one year they won and stuff like that. But Tony Dungeon, as good as he was when it came to the X's and O's, he could not outcoach Bill Belichick. And that made the difference. And stuff because at that time Tom Brady was still ascending, but he wasn't where he was when he reached that Tampa Bay status and stuff like that. So that's my two piece on that one. What they did to Bill, they found every way possible to try to make him look bad and stuff like that. Sure, you ask Wes Welker, you ask Asante Samuels, bitter guys that left on bitter terms, they're gonna give you bitter responses and stuff like that. So I I care that's what they had to say in the documentary and stuff like that, especially Russ Welker who couldn't catch a football that would have made a difference and stuff like that in the Super Bowl and stuff like that. Or Asante Sanders who dropped an interception 
that also cost us and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's that's my two cents on that whole um, situation with that. You know, the facts are you don't luck up and win Super Bowls and stuff like that if you aren't great at your craft. It takes a whole team and stuff like that. It really does. It takes a whole team. Someone's got to keep the guys in line. Got to keep the Eagles in check. Got to call them out during the film. The stuff that we as fans don't get to see. Someone's got to do that. But I do believe that, you know, years of seeing Bill Belichick do it, it did rub off on Tom to where towards the end he was able to replicate that in Tampa that first year. Let's see, let's see. Joe says, watch how you talk about them. Uh, <laughs> he means them coats. <laughs> And so I'm just saying, because you look at what Peyton did when he left um, Indianapolis and he went to the Broncos, was able to win more and have, well, get to the Super Bowl more, I should say, with the Broncos than he did in Indianapolis simply because Denver had a defense there, you know, and, and Denver's coach, you know, made, had a, played a big role in that. You know, they said, okay, Peyton's got the offense and stuff like that. We got to be able to do the X's and O's. That's what you want from a coach. He's not putting on shoulder pads and playing, so of course the players are extremely important. I'm not denying that. But from what the coach has to do, his role, Bill did it. And Bill didn't care if we liked him or not. And that's why when it all falls apart, everybody was waiting for a moment to take a shot at Bill Belichick. Couldn't do it while he was winning, so they had to wait till he started losing and try to erase everything that we literally saw and saw like that from Bill Belichick and stuff like that. So I know what I saw from Bill. I know that many times in many games we made adjustments at halftime that think about that Atlanta um, and Patriots Super Bowl. As great as Brady was, we were struggling for the first three and a half quarters and stuff like that. But if Bill's defense doesn't hold them and stuff like that and make adjustments, it didn't matter what the offense did. And vice versa, same with Tom. If Tom doesn't go out there and do what he's supposed to do, him and James White, then we don't get that. It takes a team effort and stuff like that. You know, roster management, as you can see with many teams, you know, you got guys, they want to get paid. Everybody wants to get paid. And when you start winning a lot, you have to make the hard choice that says, hey, lawyer Malloy, we're not going to pay you. We're going to cut you because we like you, but we can't pay you that. We got to send the money elsewhere. Then bring in a Rodney Harrison to come in and fill that gap. And then when he's gone, you replace him with a James Sanders and stuff like that. You draft a Brandon Merriweather. You you have to be able to adjust. It's not going to be popular and stuff like that. You know, you lose a Russ Welker, you get a Julian Edelman, and at some point, it's going to fall apart. That's what sports is in the NFL. At some point, you just can't keep the success with the salary cap. At some point, it's just going to not add up anymore. But to have it for that long, that was tremendous. Because there were some really good teams, some really good teams out there. If it wasn't for Bill Belichick, I'll go on record to say that I think that Indianapolis would have won maybe two, maybe two more Super Bowls if it wasn't for Bill Belichick being with the Patriots and stuff like that. I believe that. Because he stopped some really good Indianapolis teams from getting to the Super Bowl. Let's see. O says, I do believe it was time to move on. However, Kraft did him wrong this offseason and now trying to play the victim. And so, yeah, I agree. There comes a time where it is time to move on and stuff like that. Definitely not arguing with that aspect right there. But to erase the success that he has and stuff like that, and everybody's just, you know, especially guys like LaShawn McCoy, guys who never did it as the main man and stuff like that, just, you know, because they didn't like Bill's personality and stuff like that. And I get that, you know, like your job as a coach is not to be liked. And stuff like that. You know, your job is to go out there. Let's see. Joe says, don't forget about the referee and stuff like that. I'll tell you what. How many times have you watched the referee help a team win and then the team cannot actually go out there and win and stuff like that? It's your job as a team to make sure it never comes down to the referee's decision and stuff like that. So that's that's what I'll say about that. If you feel that the referees play a role and stuff like that, it's your job to never let it come down to the officials' hands and stuff like that. But you look at some of those games and stuff like that, some of them was just downright beatdowns and stuff like that between, um, and, you know, in those big games and stuff like that. So, absolutely. Because, shoot, I, I remember when the, uh, I think it was the, was it the Saints? and Yeah, the Saints and the Rams 
when we literally all saw a pass interference as clear as day. But the NFL let the Rams get away with that one. And they still were not able to win the Super Bowl. So that's my example with that one. The referee gave the Rams that win, but the Rams couldn't win the Super Bowl. Braden says, you think Bill Belichick coaches again? No. I don't think he coaches again because in today's league, you have to have a coach that's a player's coach and stuff like that. And Bill, don't get me wrong. He cares for the players and the players who don't mind working. I think of LeGarrette Blunt. He loved Bill Belichick. And we know that LeGarrette Blunt, he had his issues from time to time, but he loved playing for Bill Belichick. Randy Moss, he loved playing for Bill Belichick and stuff like that. So some guys do. But in today's league, I feel like Bill's just at the point where he's done. He's done. He's done. Like nobody's going to go out there and make that type of a signing because he would have to go to a contender and no contender is just going to go ahead and bring in Bill. It's just going to rev some players the wrong way. So I don't think Bill coaches again. I think he's done. He may have that desire, but it's just not going to happen. All right, but we got 20 votes in right now. So the Stallions leading the poll at 55%. Okay. We'll be getting ready for the second half to start here momentarily. I think I might have figured out our scoreboard issue here. Kick off on the way. Brought down at about the 32 yard line. All right, let's see. All right, let me do one thing here real quick. See if that makes a difference. All right, perfect. Now we have a scoreboard now. Oops. All right, so here we go. Again, Matt Corral so far, 4 of 11 for 83 yards passing, one touchdown, one interception. Here in the third quarter with 14 minutes, 35 seconds to go. Going to line up in a shotgun here. Again, we're all tied up 11 to 11, five wide on the play. Throws it. That's going to be completed for a first down. Okay, takes it to about the 46-yard line. Let's see. O says, the only way a Bill coach again is if Jerry Jones or the Eagles make him the head coach. And so I totally could see that with the whole, you know, Jerry Jones situation would be the only chance. But I don't think ultimately, I don't think he does. it. I don't think he does it ultimately. Let's see. O says, but I don't give that a big chance of happening. Exactly. All right. Feeds it to the back here and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Let's see, Braden says, yeah, Bill is a coach of the Cowboys. Jerry Jones or Bill would have to give up some control, and I don't see that happening. Now, see, <laughs> the thing is, Bill already doesn't want to talk to the media, so Jerry Jones would be able to talk all he wants and stuff like that. Bill would pay no attention. He'll just be mad when they start asking him questions about what Jerry Jones says. He would like just ask Jerry, and Jerry does not mind that. Jerry wants to talk in front of the media and stuff like that, so... Who knows? Maybe maybe they maybe they'd be able to make it work. All right, second and ten. Throws it. Oh, incomplete. Gotta get that ball on the money there. That's the difference so far in this one is that when Arlington throws the ball, they're getting those completions to make it like third and two, third and three. Meanwhile, for the Stallions here, we got to get better. Five of twelve passing for 96 yards, one touchdown, one interception. We got to get consistent with hitting these plays on second and first down to make third down a lot easier for us. 
here in the third quarter with 12 minutes and 50 seconds to go. All tied up 11 11. Looking. Has time moving. Trying to make time. And he's going to pull those four for about four yards on the play. However, he will be at least six yards shy of that first down marker. So fourth down coming up. And Arlington's defense got the stop there. And they will soon get the football. Let's see. Braden says, yep, they're the complete opposite. And so, yes, that's how I pictured that. Because Bill just doesn't want to answer questions for the media, you know, like. So I, I can respect that. And Jerry Jones will get all the time, especially if they're going out there and winning and stuff like that. You know, Bill focus on the actual gameplay aspects and stuff like that because it's basically what Mike McCarthy does. Mike McCarthy looks like somebody's son up there that's just sitting like, oh, you know, I get to be on the big stage too, you know. So that, that'll work there for the Joneses where they can do their magic with the social media and stuff like that. Be the entertainment because that's part of what people didn't like about Bill is that he gave bland answers. So if they could negate that aspect right there, then, you know, hey, let Bill just focus on what matters the most, just going out there and getting W's, which the Cowboys already get W's. So just, you know, help the defense show up in big games and stuff like that. Be strategic, make second-half adjustments. Then next thing you know, come playoffs, you know, we'll see. Then it comes down to Dak Prescott. Is Dak who we – think Dak is who he's been here throughout his entire career, or can he still find a way to elevate? But that's when we'll find out. How do you guys feel about all the moves that the Carolina Panthers have made this off season. What are your thoughts on what they did? Have how much better have these moves made the Carolina Panthers so far? And do you guys believe that Bryce Young's gonna have a bounce back? I shouldn't say bounce back, that he's gonna have a improved season. And what does that look like when you say improved season? And while we're at the commercial right now, all tied up 11 11 comparing both well both teams passing wise, we'll start with Arlington where Perez He's been the guy. He's 9 of 12 so far in this one for 111 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. You look at um, the Stallions, Matt Corral started the game off. He's 5 of 13, 96 yards passing, one touchdown, one interception. He's also got four carries for 25 yards on the ground as well. And then you look at Adrian Martinez. He's 2 of 6, 26 yards passing. One interception, but he's got three carries for 52 yards, and he is currently the Stallions' leading rusher. The Stallions have a team. They have 18 carries for 117 yards. Now, C.J. Marable, he's got seven carries, 25 yards here, and so his longest run of the game is 12 yards here. Let's see. O says, I like what the Panthers have done, but I don't see them doing anything. Plus, I was never high on Young, and so... Yeah, I've seen the money that they're doing. I mean, I'm happy for the players that they're getting paid and stuff like that. Does that improve their standings in the division? I don't think so. I love the Atlanta with Kirk Cousins thing because, one, I don't see Atlanta as a Super Bowl team. But what having Kirk Cousins does for me is that now you can go ahead and you can get your investments work with Drake London, get your investments work with Kyle Pitts, and we can actually see them go out there and look like the guys that we – that people every year in fantasy draft them to be, I feel like if it's going to happen, this is the year that it's going to happen and stuff like that for those two guys particularly. Because let's not forget, by John Robinson, you know, him, what he does in the backfield, that's going to be nice as well. I feel like having Kirk Cousins is not going to get you a Super Bowl, but it's going to make your team exciting and fun to watch again. And it's going to help you, you know, get the young guys going and make them excited about playing football and stuff like that. So that's what they needed. That's what they needed. Someone that can help them go out there and look the part. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy for them in that regard. I was a little confused about the Daryl Mooney signing there, but maybe he'll go in there and who knows, shine as well. You, you never know. All right, so here we go for the Renegades here. From their own 25-yard line, shotgun formation here. Five wide, snaps it. In the pocket, 
moving around. Perez, he wants to run, and he's going to pick up about six yards on the carry before they bring him down. So now we got third down coming up, but great job making it third and, you know, five right here. The difference between third and ten and third and five is big, and that's what Arlington has done a really good job of so far in this one when it comes to that. Now you look at stuff like time of possession so far in this one, um, it's leaning towards the Stallions right now in terms of time of possession. They've had the ball for over 19 minutes, but Arlington's had it roughly about 16 minutes offensively in terms of time of possession here. Shotgun again, snaps it, third and five, pressure all around, throws it. Good job there, feeling the pressure, still stepping up and completing the pass, not letting the pressure throw you off of your pass and doing a good job of getting the first down. How are we feeling about Tennessee post Derrick Henry? Now that Derrick Henry is with the Baltimore Ravens, as I mentioned earlier, how do we feel about the new look Tennessee Titans? They did go out there and open the bank for Calvin Ridley, and we knew Calvin Ridley was going to take the money. A man who would gamble on himself and lose money by trying to gain money will always chase the money. And that's exactly what happened there. <laughs> he followed the money and ended up getting, getting a nice deal. Oh, excellent job there by the Stallions to get him there for the sack. He tried to run that time, going nowhere, no time soon. That time the Stallions pass rush got to him. Excellent job. And that's what they have to do. Help your secondary out and get to him. You can't just get in his face, but you got to get to him and bring him down. Now we got second and 16 coming up. Let's see, old says for me, I got the Falcons, Bucks, Saints, and then Panthers. I just think with the Falcons in the offseason so far. And so, yeah, I like it for them. I think we're going to see a completely difference. Arthur, Arthur Smith was, in my mind, like, whatever you think that the team was, he was just a negative 10 and stuff like that. I'll just say, like, negative 10 and stuff like that. His play calling – his decision-making, his conservative nature and stuff like that, the way that he got aggravated with his young quarterbacks and stuff like that and didn't just refuse to pass the ball and stuff, I think that changes this year. And because of that change, I do believe that that's going to elevate them in the division. I got to see how the draft plays, the rest of the thing and stuff like that. But right now, I've got both the Falcons and the Buccaneers both at that, you know, 1A, 1B spot for right now. And – if I had to pick one right now, I lean a little bit towards Atlanta because I feel like Bay John, Bay John Robinson is going to have a breakout year this upcoming year, I feel like. Oh, it says Titans spent big this offseason. They did what they thought Pat should be doing. That's right. I just wouldn't have um, gotten Pollard, though. All right, but here we go. Second and forever. So they throw a screen pass, and he's going to pick up about three yards on the play. It's going to make it third and 27, again, from their own 18-yard line. So right now, an opportunity, if you're the Stallions, to try to get off that field here. But you got to make sure, got to make sure that you do not help the offense out. That means no pass interference, no face mask, no ref in the passer. Play smart football here. I know you want to get after the quarterback, but don't do anything dumb. And I'll say this. This game has not had too many penalties, so I am happy about that. Normally, the opening week, you probably see a lot more flags. Now, hopefully, JB didn't jinx it here, knock on wood. But I'm happy that we're having a much cleaner game than I would expect for an opening week. And Perez on the move. Perez, he's looking. Perez throws that one short incomplete. That's going to bring out the punt unit. Excellent job by the Stallions defensively there. And you should end up having decent a good field position. I'll tell you what, the biggest shock for me when it came to trading, it shouldn't have been a shock, but I do like what the Bears did in terms of getting Keenan Allen. I was hoping that we would get either Keenan Allen for my Patriots. I really wanted him. Or Brandon Ayuk as well. Once I seen the T. Higgins got tagged and stuff like that, I was like, dang it. You know, and then Mike Evans going back to Tampa, all that stuff. So, but yeah, that is what I was hoping. And I would love to get Brandon Ayuk, but the asking price 
we're not going to be able to get that to him. That right, goes all the way to the 40-yard line. So Stallions here starting off on their own 40-yard line. Matt Corral. Can he lead the Stallions down here to try to take a score and get their first lead of the game? We'll find out when they come back from the commercial. Let's see. O says, yeah, I don't see Pats making any big moves there onto the draft. And so, yeah, they have they have definitely told us from time to time that they are not going to be making a big splash since they didn't get the guys that we were targeting, um, as in Calvin Ridley. We're going to focus on the draft is what they say. And so, you know what? I'm okay with it. Braden Packers has shown me that, you know what? You can get a Christian Watson in the second, you know, round, hopefully, and hopefully Braden Christian Watson to be healthy this entire season and all that. I still believe in the guy. Last year, I took him in fantasy. Maybe if he went out there and performed the way that I know that he could have and stuff like that, maybe JB's team doesn't get eliminated so early in the playoffs of our fantasy football league, but in all like that, but I'm not putting it on him. There were some other guys that didn't perform as well and a couple injuries, but, um, but who knows? You know, you get a guy like him, then you get a guy like Romeo Dubs as well, you know, later in that round. So it's possible that we can hit in the second round and double dip in the fourth as well, then maybe sign like a free agent or something. We just need really two impactful guys that are going to go in there and be and come in with that hunger. You know, that's going to go in there, win those catches, win those um, big plays and stuff like that, and help us out on the outside. You know, someone who's going to be everything that Devontae Parker was never for us. So, and then Taekwon Thornton, if he can just be healthy, I see that he's bulking up a little bit since he's still going to be around old. And I know that this is something that is like in, a, in my mind, I feel like is not going to happen. But keeping him around, I just hope that I'm wrong and I hope that he can go out there and really contribute. I'm not even asking him to be great, just contribute on a regular basis. And then the rookies from last year, you know, Demario Douglas, he did great. Take that next leap and stuff like that. That'll be tremendous. You know, keep working with Troy Brown, continue to get better and stuff like that. Happy for him. Um, now, the other one, the kid from LSU, got my doubts about him. Got my doubts about him tremendously. All right, seven minutes to go here in the third quarter. Again, all tied up 11-11 in the Stallions right now facing the first and 10. Let's see what Matt Corral in the offense can do. Snaps it. Feeds it to the back. Oh, man, what a nice carry that was. Wow. Just when I assumed that they were going to pass the ball here, what an excellent job, C.J. Murray. He's got nine carries for 38 yards in this one. That was his longest run. Of the game. Old says, JB, I gave up on Thornton. To me, it's a it's a make it or break it year for him. It is. It is. He has a lot to show me as well, Old. Like he has to earn a roster spot. He has to earn playing time at this point. But I'm rooting for him still. Why? Because we're desperate. <laughs> so I'm still rooting for him. I just hope that he puts it all together. I, I know he's got the speed. I, I, can, I can say that. You know, the speed alone is not enough. All right, so second down coming up. And again, you look at the, you look at the total yards. Birmingham has almost 100 more total yards. Because right now it's Birmingham 252, um, Arlington 157 for total yards. But... We're all tied up. So that tells me, Birmingham, we got to score. Throws it, gets the completion. Oh, he's got some room on the sideline. How deep can he get? And there's a penalty. There's a penalty. I jinxed that one earlier. There's a penalty. And let's see. RC says, JB, I'm back, bro. You said these games not for the faint of heart at all. 
Yeah, not at this, not at this time of the year, RC. Bring your own heart monitor at this point with the pressure of these games. You say these games are referring to the March Madness Women's Editions. So I got you, I got you. But the same can apply here as well. Absolutely. But what's the um, what what's going on with those games and stuff? I don't have it pulled up because I've got this one. Probably you need to go ahead and pull it up though when this ends. Oh, look at that. Yep, yep. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Oh, wow. So the, okay, so the LSU game's still going on. Okay. You say LSU's up four with 36 seconds left. I mean, I pulled it up on my tablet here just now so that way I can see myself here. So. Okay, nice. Appreciate the heads up there. I know how Tennessee lost was a heartbreaker for them. So you got to be careful there. But feeds it to the back up the middle, and the back is going to be about a yard shy. Yeah, a yard shy. So we're going to have second and goal coming up, second and one. So can the Stallions? Punch it in and get that touchdown. I wonder if there's any update on uh, Martinez and his injury. Because if he was good to go, I would put Martinez in and give him the option to keep it himself or hand it to the back. I feel like that would get the defense a little confused to get him in there. All right, but first time I've got to, got to go ahead and coach him up here. Again, third quarter with five minutes and ten seconds to go. Score is So here we go, second and goal. Let's see, can the big boys win this one up front? It's going to come down to them winning this one. All right, Corral here up on the center. We've got the three backs in the backfield here. Love the formation. Snaps it. Hands it to the back. Which back is it? Oh, look at that. That's going to be a touchdown for the Stallions. Ricky Person does it in person. Let's go. Let's go. That is six points on the board. Let's see what they attempt here for the point after touchdown play. But, man, look at that. That time they won the battle. You look at 63 and, and 75, and those guys on the edge there, the other backs all slow. There's just too many guys to get through. So, wow, what a play. So I feel better now. I can feel better now. My Birmingham Stallions, they have claimed the lead right now. I feel good. And let's see, RC says, JB, I just sent out a message. It read, if you are an LSU fan for the rest of your life, don't ever speak to me again. You say you're tired of LSU beating your teams. <laughs> Two-point play here by the Stallions. Corral moving around. Corral looking, throws at the last second, finds a guy in the back of the end zone. That's good for two points. And that was Jennings with the catch. Wow. 19 to 11 stallions here on top in this one in the third quarter with five minutes and seven seconds to go but how will arlington respond now this is the first time that they're going to be trailing in this one so let's see how they respond when we come back from the commercial but right now matt corral gets his team into the end zone here got him up front there and then they finish it off with the running touchdown tremendous Let's see. RC says, JB, did you watch the Super Bowl with the Kansas City Cheats? Ha <laughs> ha, Kansas City Cheats. RC is still on one, I see. But yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. And honestly, I felt like the 49ers early in the game, like very early in the game, 
they had a chance to where they really, they had some opportunities to where they could have won that. But Christian McCaffrey fumbling on the opening drive when the 49ers were moving the ball at will. He had a couple early mistakes there that was un-Christian McCaffrey-like. That hurt them. That hurt them. And then by the time they got towards, you know, where it was close, Kansas City, they're clutch. They're clutch. Giants fan 56, what's good with you? How are you doing? How have you been? And how is everything going over there with the Rhinos? And he says, and she says, let's see. Hey, JB, just hit the like button. Have a good stream. I appreciate that. And yes, Rhinos up. Yes, absolutely. Oh, man, what is the Rhino sub count right about now? That is the question there, but definitely happy to see you. Thanks for coming through and showing some love here to JB Nation. Absolutely. It feels great to be back. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. It's been a long journey, but I am here and just got in just before the start of April and stuff like that. So <laughs> excellent. Appreciate that. Yes. And just a reminder for everyone that JV will be streaming again tomorrow. Um, and it's going to be the two o'clock game. So I forget which one that one is, but it's going to be streaming the, the, Three o'clock Eastern game for the UFL. So excited to be back. For now, I'll start off with the weekends here, but I'll be monitoring the um, college hoops game and then I'll see, you know, try to get a couple of those in as well before we get to the championship game and stuff like that. All right, so getting ready to come back from the commercial here. And everybody also let me know which team do you have winning the um, college hoops. If you want to tell me the two teams that you have getting to the championship game and who you have winning in college hoops, let me know that in the chat as well. All right, kick off on the way. Let's see if we're going to return here. And we will from the 6 to the 20, 25, 30, and brought down at about the 35-yard line. So that is where the Renegades will take over in this one. Trailing now 19 to 11. Five minutes to go here in the third. There is a penalty, a late flag game up here. Let's see what they're discussing over there. Now, the good news if you are the Renegades is that Perez He's 11 of 16, 119 yards, and he has been pretty calm despite the pass rush when they don't sack him and stuff like that. He does a pretty good job of getting the ball out and getting it to his guys. And so he's going to continue to show that composure and stuff. Uh, running the ball rise, you know, Brown, he's got six carries for 30 yards for them. Smith, seven carries, 16 yards. So as a team, the Renegades have 15 carries for 52 yards, and they're averaging 3.5 yards to carry on the ground. Let's see what they do here. So after the penalty, which bumps them up to their to the 49-yard line, their 49-yard line, they snap it, hand it to the back, and the back. Off the left side there, takes it to the stallion side of the field, to pick up about three yards on the carry. A little bit of trash talking there. Four minutes and 45 seconds to go here in the third. All right, so second and six coming up. Shotgun, two seconds right now on the play clock. Got to snap the ball. It does get the snap. Birmingham sends five. He throws it short. It's completed. And he gets the first down and then some. Oh, look at that. A little bit of extra push in here. And so Smith is definitely heated out there, but great job getting the first down. So now we're at the Birmingham 38-yard line. So will Arlington be able to get in that end zone and tie it up on this drive here? Again, both teams right now, they both believe that they're the best teams here. Let's see how this plays out. And so Braden living in the future again, I see. First and 10, shotgun, fakes it to the back, throws it off the wrong foot, 
And oh, threw it right there, deflected. Lucky that one was not picked off there. He's generally done a pretty good job so far this um, game of not forcing it. But that time he took the shot there, feeling the pressure, and it was incomplete. All right, so here we go. Shotgun formation again. Four receivers, one back. Receiver goes in motion. Five seconds on the play clock. Snaps it. Low snap. In the pocket. Trying to get out. Throws it with all kind of guys around him. But it doesn't matter because he gets completion to about the 22-yard line of the Stallions there. So great job there for Arlington. I mean, that time he felt the rush. Moved up the ladder, and just as they were getting to his ankles there, he was able to still get it because that time there was a lane. An excellent job there to get that ball there. Excellent job. That's how you bounce back from the bad throw. And again, the poll with 22 votes, and the Stallion still leading the poll. Makes JV very happy here. All right, this time Perez up under center here, wants the tight ends. Pull back in the back in the back, really toss to the back in the back, trying to get up the middle here. And he's going to pick about two yards from the carry. So now we got second and eight. Again, third quarter with about two minutes and two seconds to go. Braden says, RC isn't having a good time right now. Oh, man, don't, don't say that. What, what happened? <laughs> And we can see what happened. Oh, yeah, it's finalized. It's done. It's done. But he's got to regroup because Iowa's going to be coming out next for him. All right, five seconds here on the play clock. Snaps it. Gives it to the back off the right side. But a lot of traffic there, and they got him. They made him stumble. He lost a yard, maybe two. And that was Brown on the carry. You never want to go backwards there. But a minute and 24 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. Again, the Stallions up in this one, 19 to 11. Facing the third and 10 situation here. In which Birmingham in the second half, they've done a much better job of forcing Arlington into third and long rather than third and short. What you do on first and second down when you're Arlington, that makes a big difference. Especially for them. Because they're having to work for each and every yard so far in this one. They've got 186 yards total in this game. And so let's see how this one plays out. Oh, that's going to be the lay of the game. He says UCLA lost. Could see a rematch of last year's championship game. That's very well possible. Very well possible. But... We'll see how things look against this Colorado squad. That's going to be an interesting one right there for sure. I know I'll be keeping tabs on it. All right, so now you've got a third and 15 situation after that delay of game penalty against Arlington. You're down by eight points here, third and 15. What do you do from your own 33-yard line to try to get this first? Receiver goes in motion, snaps it, Perez in the pocket, Perez throws it over the middle, and that's going to be incomplete. I think some of them might have got a finger on it or something like that, or at least hit his hand or something there, but that ball was short, incomplete, fourth down coming up, and now it's going to be getting ready to be Birmingham's football again, and let's see what they do. Let's see what they do. All right, so it's going to be a 45-yard field goal attempt here. So they believe in their kicker. Let's see if he'll come through for him. Kick is up, and oh, my goodness. I thought he was going to miss it, but it curved back in and gives them three points. That really looked like he was going to miss it at first glance there, but it curved in. How about that? So 19-14 is the score. There is a penalty, though. Right, there's a decline to penalty, though. Three points stays up there. 
Okay, 19 to 14 is our score. And we've got one quarter remaining. So as they say, get your popcorn ready. Get your popcorn ready. Let's see, Brandon says that bent back and I thought that was going to go wide. And so, <laughs> yes, that kick looked like it was good. That had me questioning how much wind is in this game because that one looked like it was about to go like really far right. It wasn't like barely, it was like really about to look like it was about to curve out. But then it just went back in. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Now, you look at the differences between these two um, teams here so far in this game here. Stallions, they've ran 43 plays in this game offensively, while the Renegades have ran 39. So a difference of four plays. But average yards per completion, the Stallions are averaging about 18.6 yards per completion. Renegades are averaging about 10.2. And then average rushing yards in attempt. For, um, in this game, the Stallions are averaging as a team about 6.1 yards per um, rush, while the Renegades are averaging about 3.1 yards per rush. Now, that being said, Perez is 13 of 20 for 144 yards passing, one touchdown, no interceptions. Meanwhile, Mac Corral, 6 of 14 for 124 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Let's see. Time for UFL football. What's good with you? He says, good to see you back, JB. How are you, Mike? How are you? How has everything been going with you? Nice to see you. Yes, Mike here in the flesh. Absolutely. And again, 23 votes so far in this one. 57% say the Stallions will win this one. 43% say that it'll be the Renegades. But right now, we have a 19-14 game. And when we come back, it will be the start of the fourth quarter. One quarter to determine who is going to get the first W of the new league. We're going to find out now. And just a reminder, JB does have the stream already set up for tomorrow. So we'll definitely be looking forward to that. Absolutely. And tomorrow's matchup, we're going to be seeing the Showboats versus the Roughnecks. That will be the one that JV is streaming tomorrow. So Memphis versus Houston. I believe that doesn't Memphis have um, the quarterback who was for Philadelphia last year on um, the Philadelphia Stars, I should say, last year. I think he went to Memphis, if I'm not mistaken. If someone knows, let me know in the chat. Meanwhile, kick off the return here. And oh, what a return is going to be. Takes it all the way to midfield. And let's see. O says Macaro needs to step up and get the job done. Wish he was still on the Pats. And so isn't that something that he literally was on our Patriots and then he's now on our Stallions? And so it's very interesting how that works out. But excellent quality of play that we've seen so far in this one. But let's see shotgun here. Fourth quarter, Stallions up 19-14. Three receivers, one tight end, one back. Five seconds on the play clock. Feeds it to the back up the middle. Picks up about, about three yards on the carry. C.J. Moravia. All right, so what would they call on second and seven here? Breaks the huddle. All right, this time it's going to be, all right, lined up one back behind him here. Tight end goes in motion, three receivers. Feet to the back and the back. Up the middle, picks up two yards on the play. That's going to make it third and five coming up. 
So with third and five, if you're Arlington, you have to be aware that if his first read is not there for Matt Corral, he might take off and run most likely in the third and five situation like this to try to get that first down, especially if he starts to feel the pressure. So far today, they are three of six on third down conversions. Let's see if they can get this one. Snaps the ball, has time, throws it. Oh, what a nice play. Nice play. If he underthrows that one, then it's picked. If he overthrows it, nobody gets it. But excellent job getting it there and getting the first down in that time. The biggest difference, you look at that offensive line, they gave him time on that play. He was able to stand in that pocket. So give credit where credit is due. Great job by everybody, especially that offensive line, giving him time on a crucial third down. They snap it, throws it, gets it to the back. Makes a guy miss. Oh, man, look at that. Nice athleticism showing on that play right there just to make the first guy miss. That was impressive enough. So now we're looking at a second and six situation here from about the Arlington 16-yard line. Stallions up 19 to 14. Here in the fourth, 12 minutes and 35 seconds to go. Matt Carroll, 8 of 16 for 154 yards, one touchdown, one interception. But I feel like he's starting to play a little bit better, and that's a good sign. Snaps it. Feeds it to the back. The back gets back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. That was Persons on the carry. Now we got a third and five situation coming up. There is an injured player. Down there on the field right now, number 90 for the Arlington Renegades. Hopefully he'll be okay here. He looks like he's in a good amount of pain. I wonder if that's his knee. That'll take us to the commercial. All right, so we talked a little bit about women's hoops. We're right now at the commercial due to the injured player for the Arlington. Hopefully he will be okay. But um, in terms of the men who play today and stuff like that, who do you guys like out of Illinois and Connecticut today for the men's? And who do you guys like from Clemson and Alabama, which sounds so much like a football matchup, but it's not, guys. It's actually college hoops. So who do you guys like tonight in those matchups? Let me know here in the chat between Illinois and Connecticut and also Clemson and Bama. Honestly, I feel like I would love to see, um, especially when it comes to, I want to see Illinois get a W because I'm tired of the Big Ten getting bounced every year in the tournament. So I want to see a Big Ten team win it. So I'm, I'm rooting for the fight in the line to win that matchup against UConn. Again, I said rooting for it. Don't think that's going to happen, but I'm rooting for it. Uh, Clemson and Bama, can they both lose? Question mark. Uh, I don't have a horse in that race at all. But Tennessee and Purdue tomorrow, I'm hoping Purdue wins. I'm, I'm hoping Purdue wins. But if Tennessee wins, I do like Tennessee as well. So either or. And I'm hoping North Carolina State beats Duke. So that's what JV's hoping. All right, but here we go. Third and five. Shotgun formation. Gets the snap. Defense sends forward. Throws it to the back. The back gets the catch. Can he get the first down? Yes, he does. Excellent job there. And he has not hesitated to put himself and his body on the line to make the big plays in this one. That makes a difference. That time you see takes on the contact. Excellent job staying in bounce there. Now let's look to see if that heel touched the ground or not. 
But either way, he did get that first down. So now we got a first and goal. Persons has three catches for 41 yards in this one. Oh, wow, look at that. That's going to be a touchdown. He was untouched. Untouched. Wow. Look at that. I thought it was lightning striking how fast that was. So a touchdown for the Stallions. They're up 25 to 14. It doesn't matter. Add all the teams you want. The Stallions are still the Stallions right now. Heck, we'll take on NFL teams at this point. Bring them on. Bring them on. What an excellent play right there. C.J. Marable and company. He's got 13 carries for 52 yards in this one. And now a rushing touchdown to go with it. But now, the two-point attempt. Here in the shotgun. I'm about to say, that's been a zero for an awfully long time. At some point, you got to call that one, baby. you got to call that one. Let's see, Ola says the Stallions could beat the Panthers in his opinion, and I doubled down on that one. Yes, yes, I can see it now. Matt Corral gets a touchdown against his former team and beats them in heartbreaking fashion. The owner spills drinks on a couple more fans and stuff like that out of pure frustration for Carolina. <laughs> I can see the storyline. Speaking of the Carolina Panthers, who is the best head coach, in your opinion, that the Carolina Panthers have ever had throughout their history? Meanwhile, the two-point play, he says it's incomplete. I thought he had it. I thought he had it. That, isn't that a catch? Like, show me a replay. So maybe I just had a bad angle, but I thought Amari Rogers caught that. But that one's going to be – let me see a replay here. All right, let's see. One foot, two foot. How many more feet do you need? How many feet do you need? Look at that. One foot. The second foot. That's, that's good. What are we doing? What are we doing? Oh, it says he might just sell the team at that point. Braden says that's a catch. Braden says Ron Rivera. I'm going to say John Fox was the best coach that they um, had because he did it with Jake Malone and stuff like that. In that Carolina team, you think of a young Steve Smith and stuff like that, you know, the first to do it. I, I liked it that one. I liked it that one. I feel like John Fox was a um, good coach, too. But Ron Rivera as well. You can pick either or, of course. They both left on bad terms, I guess, in terms of just the records and stuff like that. Both led their teams to a Super Bowl. And we're currently right now at the commercial. All right, Ola says Dom Capers for him. And so, oh, man, that's a name that I have not heard of in a minute. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Okay, okay. Yeah, that has been a minute there.
wasn't Dom also like head coach for the Houston Texans and like during the David Carr era, if I'm not mistaken, as well? All right, kickoff on the way. Catches at the four. It's at the 15, 20, 25, bouncing back out. But, yeah, they're going to keep bouncing back at some point. You're not going to be able to get back there. And they got him. So now, Arlington, they have the work cut out for them. They're down 27 to 14 right now in the opening game here to get this season on the way. Let's see what they do here in the fourth. This is where they're going to have to lean on Perez. As all, they were already leaning on him. But he's been about 65% completion percentage so far in this game. You know, um, 144 yards passing. But they're going to need him now to basically double that if they're going to have a chance in this one. He's got to go out there and make a play. So if you're the secondary for Birmingham, stay awake. He's going to have to take a couple of shots at some point. All right, so here in the shotgun, putting it on 25-yard line. Renegades with it in the pocket. Throws down and gets the completion. And he gets brought down there. Tried to shove away from the guy there, but excellent job bringing down the guy that's bigger than you. Let's see. Braden says, our old defensive coordinator for the Packers. And so, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. That was I, – I was going to mention that as well. So, yeah, that was like – a good, what, eight years, I think, from like 2009 or 2017, if I'm not mistaken. The Green Bay. He's been around football for a long time. Like going back to like 1972 when he was like a graduate assistant back at Kent State. That's how far back you got to go. Kent State, Washington, there's some everywhere. San Jose State. He also spent a little bit of time at Ohio State as well for like, I think it's like 82, 83 as like a defensive backs coach as well. So he spent some time somewhere everywhere. Messi Braden says, good. They called it a catch as they should have, as they should have. All right, 10 minutes to go here in the fourth. Through it. Completed, picked up about five yards on the play. And so, Dixon Way, what's good with you? How are you? And you say, like, smash, have a great stream. I appreciate that, and I appreciate you. I hope all is well with you. Yes, and another Birmingham vote makes JB even more happy when it comes to that. Yes. Again, Stallions up 27-14, so Arlington has to have a sense of urgency right now. You must get an offensive score in this one. You don't want them to get the ball back without you having scored it. Throw a screenplay. It's completed to the receiver. He gets the first down. He takes it to the Birmingham side of the field here at their 46-yard line with a fresh you set it down to work with with nine minutes and 20 seconds to go. But as you know, that clock, it does continue to run. So you got to move with a sense of urgency right now. Can Perez do it? That's the question. Brandon says, yep, he was a good defensive coordinator for us until like the last two years that he was with you guys. Okay. Nine minutes to go here in the fourth. Again, 16 to 23 for 168 yards. One touchdown, no interception so far. One back in the backfield, three receivers, one tight end. Snaps the ball, play fake. On the move. Looking. Throws it deep. Oh, he made a mistake. He made a mistake and threw the interception. Wow. How about that for them Stallions? Braden says picked. Yes. So with eight minutes and 39 seconds to go here in the fourth, what a costly turnover that is going to be for the Renegades. And just like that, the Stallions making it do what it do defensively. See, Perez was doing tremendous early on, you know, when the game was close. But now that he feels the pressure that he has to make plays, 
It is forcing him to have to look deeper when it's not necessarily there, especially since it seems like the underneath stuff right now isn't there. So you try to force that to make a play considering the situation, and that time came back to bite him. Absolutely. All right, so that turnover right there. And when we come back, I imagine that we're going to see a decent amount of rushes and stuff like that from Birmingham and they'll get a good mixture and stuff like that. I wonder the status of Martinez and stuff like that earlier. I know he got injured earlier. Hopefully he's okay. Let's see. Old says Macro in this game and get a touchdown. Yes. Yes. Let's go ahead and get that offense fired up early in this one. Let's do it. CJ Morabos got 13 carries, 52 yards here. Persons, he's got six carries, 17 yards as well. Both running backs are responsible for a rushing touchdown in this one. So that makes me happy. As a team, the Stallions, 26 carries, 146 yards, and two touchdowns, averaging 5.6 yards a carry. And when you're averaging 5.6 yards a carry and you're running the ball upwards of 22 times a game, you're going to be in a good spot. You're going to be in a good spot. You're taking time off the clock. You're moving the chains. You're keeping your defense to where they can get a break and stuff like that. That's huge. That's huge. And Matt Corral right now, he is 9 of 17 for 162 yards passing, one touchdown, one interception in this one. But that completion percentage looking a lot better and stuff like that as of late than what it was early on. All right, so here we go. Again, here in the fourth with eight minutes and 39 seconds to go. Let's see what the Birmingham Stallions do from their own five-yard line, thanks to the turnover. Just a snap. Going to feed it to person in person. Picks up five yards on the play. I'm oh, sorry, that wasn't person's there. That was another running back here. Or was that person's? All right, with eight minutes and eight seconds to go here in the fourth quarter, second and five coming up. And so let's see. Mike says, how Corral looking? And so, well, Mike. As of right now, he is 9 of 17 for 162 yards, one touchdown, one interception. He's also got four carries for 25 yards and stuff like that. So early on in the first half, you know, he had a couple of mistakes and stuff like that, a bad throw also, which is why he threw that interception, overthrowing this guy. But as of late, Mike, he started playing a little bit better in that fourth quarter. So... He's getting better. It's the first week there, so I'm seeing some good things. He's definitely our quarterback one because as much as I love Martinez's running ability, his passing ability leaves a lot to be desired at this current moment. So, but yeah, he's looking good as of now. Oh, but there is a penalty here. We cannot be having mistakes. Continue. Do not take your foot off the pedal here. That's how it's laid the game there. All right, so let's get it back up five yards here. So third and nine coming up in their own six-yard line here with seven minutes and ten seconds to go. Will they get a first down? Because if not, they're going to give Arlington pretty good field position, one would think. But let's see. So Corral here in the shotgun, gets the snap, defense, sends four alignment. 
He's moving around, looking, throws it, gets the completion. Wow. Gets that one all the way to about the 23-yard line and stuff. That was a dangerous play turned great play. Because it's dangerous because if you get called for holding there, you're going to give up two points there. But he did a tremendous job. Great job there also by his left tackle. And I'm sorry, his right tackle and stuff like that. Just having the awareness not to grab him but get in the way and stuff like that. Again, that was his right tackle there. So excellent job on that one there by the Stallions. So how about that? How about that? And that was Williams with the catch. He picked up 17 yards on the play. Now they're going to run it up the middle. And let's see, this is going to be Marable here. He's going to pick up two yards in the play. And let's see. Mike says, I'm a Jordan Thomas truther. Bet. He says, I'm ready to the Jets. A shocker. And so, yeah, like, um, I seen that one. I mean, I guess I did hear that it seemed like, you know, there was possibly that they could be moving on and stuff like that. But to go to the Jets, that part right there was just, that was a shocking part. I didn't think the Jets were going to be the destination there. How are you feeling about your Buffalo Bills offseason so far, Mike? Let me know. What did you like? What don't you like? What are you hoping takes place in the draft and stuff like that? And Stephon Diggs, you know, like how are you feeling about Stephon Diggs? You say new headset. And so this is indeed a new headset because my other headset stopped working during the halftime of the Usher performance. And stuff like that during the um, Super Bowl. So this is a new headset that I only used. I, th I think I used this one maybe one time already. But yes. How's it sound, Mike? Does it sound good? Does it sound okay? No echo? Let's see. O says, Jets stole him at the at worst. They gave up 226 third round pick. They're going to Super Bowl if, or bust. And so, I'm sorry, 2026 third round pick? Wow. That's, that's way in the future there. And let's see. Need a receiver, a receiver, and a receiver. Well, the good news, Mike, is that this year's receiver class has a lot of good depth there, a lot of good depth there. So that's going to be advantageous for sure when it comes to that. So rest assured, rest assured of that, you know, whether it's first round, second round, third round, heck, fourth, fifth round, I'd even say there's going to be some some dogs taken later than they should. There's going to be some steals, some diamonds in the rough here. There's a lot of good guys out there. Let's see. Mike says, was Zeke any good last year? Zeke was about as good as a tire that's been out of air for the last five years. So, now, I mean, was it his fault? No, but he added nothing really to us and stuff like that. He was just the guy to get the carries during garbage time, and there was a lot of garbage time, right? But no, no, if it's my call, he's not, yeah, he's, he's not coming back. So, yeah, like, he was not um, that guy that we needed. Maybe with a better offensive line and stuff like that, maybe it could have helped him, but he didn't, he didn't do much for us. Kenneth, Kenneth, what's good with you? Talk to me. How are you, Kenneth? What has been going on with you? And Kenneth says, happy early Easter. That's right, happy early Easter to you as well. And he says, and how are you doing today? And you're doing good. And so I am doing pretty good. Thanks for asking. I am doing pretty good. Absolutely. But here we go. Third and 14 here for the Stallions. Gets the snap. Pressure. Throws it. Gets the completion. Let's go. Let's go. How are you going to mark the man short? Hold up now. How are you going to mark him short? He had the first down. He had. Give me the chains. Give me the chains. That was a first down. I know he came back, but where he caught the ball at? Show me a replay. Let, let me see. That's, that's a first down. You can keep, they keep trying to take. They're trying to take stuff away from us here. They tried it on the two point play. Luckily, they couldn't do that. That's obviously a first down. Who's making these calls? Let's see. Mike says draft one, and then you say. 
Curtis Samuels, Stephon Diggs, Khalil Shakur, and Mac Hollins. That's right. The, the Mac and Justin Shorter. Okay. Brandon says, what a play. Oh, it says Zeke won't be back in New England, but I think he did everything he could. And he was one of the bright sides of the past offense. And so there was maybe the game against the Steelers was the one game that I was happy with his performance. But many of those games, I just wasn't happy, period. Maybe JB just wasn't happy, period. And let's see, Braden says Carroll and Kane are going to be fun quarterback receiver duo. Mike says, okay, I did not know Bills need a power back. We're a little Mac now. <laughs> He's in Jacksonville. He's in Jacksonville. Yeah, look at this uh, replay here. No, you got to change the call. You got to change the call. Like, come on now. What are we trying to do? Let's see. Braden says maybe the Cowboys sign Zeke sometime during next season. I can see a possibility of that. I think they're going to have to wait to. They're going to wait to after the draft and stuff like that. That's for sure. Now, I tell you what, a shocker for me was seeing Aaron Jones go to the Minnesota Vikings. If Petty was a person, because he just went there, I mean, he's going to have to split time with Cam Akers and stuff like that. I imagine they're going to want to bring someone else in. I know they let go of Alexander Madison. I have no idea what happened to him since they let him go. All right, the officials got the call right here. Get him the first down that they earned. Okay. Oh, says, I thought the NFL and NBA refs were horrible. <laughs> Mike says, center Mitch Morse abruptly cut. And so, ah, oh, man. Okay, so the end of round play here. Picks up some yards. That's going to make it second and short coming up here. With four minutes and 22 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. Second and two. Braden says, don't remind about that, JV. And so, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so that, there's, there's a lot of that going on. A lot of that going on, especially with the running backs. They're like, we're just going to go to join a competition. Because the competition, they know our value. Our current team doesn't. Feeds it to the back. Oh, wow, what a nice run that was for a first down. Let's see which running back that was. That was okay. That was personal there. Mike says stuck with Von. You guys are still stuck with Von, with Von Miller. He should have just followed Aaron Donald and just went ahead and retired. And Aaron Rodgers, I'm sorry, Aaron Donald stepping away from the game. That was that was news right there. That was news right there. You know what a tremendous career that he's had and stuff like that. Impact the position in a way that you just don't see it impacted as, especially for as long as he did it for as long as he did it. There's been some that have had moments, but he was just consistent. So I know the Rams will certainly miss him. All right, feeds it to the back, and oh, what a nice carry there by the back to get the first down. And that is C.J. Marable again. He's got 15 carries for 58 yards and a touchdown in this one, averaging nearly four yards a carry. All right, let's see. O says, JB, right now, I believe Cam is a free agent and the Vikings didn't resign him. So, okay, okay. Okay, I, I figured that he was still there, but okay. Okay, so, well, I wouldn't be surprised if they did bring him, end up bringing him back. I wouldn't be surprised, but they should certainly draft a running back. They certainly need to draft a running back at some point. Mike says, Pat should have kept Marable. And he said, Vaughn got like Hundy Mill. Well, I'll tell you what, though. Birmingham having Marabel, that helps me a little bit more than my Pats have him right now. So I, I love having him here with um, the Stallions. I, I'm sad that Bo Scarborough is not back and stuff like that. I know he retired and stuff like that. So I hope that he's living it up right now. But I miss having him as well, especially early in the season and stuff like that. You know, like it's just that one-two punch was just really tremendous. But happy to have C.J. Marabel. Let's see. You say Vaughn got like Honey Mill. If he can stick around, it's so Honey Mill. So, yep. Two minutes and 26 seconds left to go in this one. And just a reminder that tomorrow I will be streaming the Showboats versus the Roughnecks tomorrow. That will be the game that I will be streaming tomorrow. And for now, it's going to be weekend streams and stuff like that. But I'll see about, you know, March Madness and stuff like that at some point. And Marable, 
Let's see how many yards they credit him with on this catch. But what a nice catch. Matt Corral so far, 11 of 20 for 193 yards. One touchdown, one interception. Third and two coming up. Two minutes and 10 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. Again, Birmingham up 27-14. All right, we have 26 votes here. Stallions, of course, leading at 62% in the poll. Makes JB happy. And that two-minute mark. While we're currently right now at the commercial. All right, so I see for the women's game, I see that uh, women's groups, I see that Iowa's up 15 to 7 over Colorado early in that one in the first quarter. We're at about 4 minutes and 51 seconds to go in that one. And again, we're currently right now at the commercial, thanks to the two-minute mark. Matt Corral, 12 of 21 for 201 yards passing. Again, one touchdown, one interception. He also tacks on four carries for 25 yards in this one. And again, Adrian Martinez, when he got to play before getting injured, he was two of six for 26 yards, one interception. But running the ball, he had three carries for 52 yards. Now you look at the Renegades, Perez, 12 of 24, 167 yards passing, one touchdown, one interception. On the ground as a team, they had four, four rushers that combined for 18 carries and 59 yards. Brown had eight carries for 30 yards, or has eight carries for 30 yards. Smith, seven carries for 17 yards. All right, here we go, third and two. Feeds it to the back, and that's going to be a first down. He definitely had that fourth practice there before they slung him down, so it's going to be a first down there. All right. How about the Stallions? That's a big first down right there. Up 27-14. That's how you start off the season right there. Oh, it says this was a really good game. It really was because early on, you know, Arlington, when they were up 11-3, it was looking kind of murky right there at the quarterback situation there for the Stallions at that time. But then we had that touchdown pass there where Corral was able to hit um, that, that touchdown pass there, which really was tremendous. There really was tremendous. And it, it came with like three seconds left before halftime. So it was clutch. It was clutch. Absolutely. And again, we're currently right now at the commercial.
right, but yes, another reminder, tomorrow we will be live again for tomorrow. Again, Roughnecks, Showboats. Hopefully that will be a good game. Oh yeah, you see all smiles and stuff on the sideline. Yes, Dallas is doing what we do and all like that, trying to keep our streak alive this season. That's the goal. I want another championship here. Oh, how are you feeling about the Lakers and stuff like that? You know, like just, just keep it a buck with me. What do you expect to happen with the Lakers? How far will we go? Person. Picks up about a yard in the play. And Braden, tell me, talk to me. How are you feeling about the whole Draymond situation and what's going on with Draymond and stuff like that? And your Golden State Warriors, the state of your Golden State Warriors. So talk to me and let me know your thoughts on, you know, where you guys are currently at right now. All right, so we got second and eight, a minute, 48 seconds left to go in this one with the Stallions up 27 to 14 in this one. All right, let's see. O says, I expect them to make it out the, to make out the um, play in. Okay, but not winning it this year. I see LeBron coming back, though, and I'm not happy about it. And so, okay, okay. Okay, I mean... They, they flipped the script definitely as of late and stuff like that, much better. I feel like the X factor for us is at the point guard position when it comes to, obviously, you know, Russell. Like, sure, last year he had some moments where he was good, but when we really needed him in that Denver series, he was a no-show. So I'm hoping that him, Dan Whittle, those guys, that they can just be solid. You know, Austin Reeves, you know, he was last year's X factor and stuff like that. Can we get him going at a high level? If we can get the others to play, them, we need them the most in those big series against a team like Denver and stuff like that. That would be good. I, I know what I'm going to get from AD come playoff time. I know what I'm going to get from Brock come playoff time and stuff like that. But the others, when we're on the road and stuff like that, can we can we do that? Let's see. Oh, it says, plus AD has, been, has proven me wrong this year. Him and AR have been carrying the team. And so, oh, yeah, and eight. I mean, that's what AD was supposed to be doing from the get-go, you know. That's that's what we had talked about his role was supposed to be. But this year, it's starting to be there. I just hope they come playoff time. All I can hope is that we're healthy and stuff like that. And we've got pieces. We've got pieces. And we've seen those pieces work, and they're starting to get more confident because some of the wins we've gotten late and stuff like that with some of the guys being out have just been tremendous and stuff like that. Now, sure, last time we lost, but I'm talking about like just overall the last couple of weeks, I've seen some really good things, some promising things. So I'm hopeful. I am hopeful. But at the same time, when those other teams start to turn it up, can we match that? When a game, you know, six on the roll or something like that, game seven or something like that, can we match that? I don't know. I tell you what, though, I'm feeling better about them than I did, you know, a little while ago, about a month or two ago. All right, so we're going to get a long field goal to 10th here. The kick is up, and the kick, oh, it doinks. It doinks, no good. He blew it, literally. His last name is like blew it. He, he, he blew it. But that just leaves 20 seconds on the clock there. And so it would have been nice if we would have got it there. But, you know. I was hoping it would have curved in like the other field goal we saw earlier. But it did not curve. But 
But yeah, seeing guys like, you know, Jackson Haynes get a little bit more comfortable with his role and stuff like that, you know, that's very important. That's very important. Very important. Guys like Prince, you know, comfortable in their roles. That is huge. All right, with 23 seconds here from our own 43, gets the snap. Perez looking, throws it short, gets the completion. It's going to tack on some extra yards for anybody that took the player prop here for Perez. 16 seconds. Oh, yeah, but we know who got this one, so I'll go ahead and end that poll. Oh, just drop, just, just, I, no excuse there. I mean, he, he's clearly thinking about the locker room at this point. His head's not even in the game at this point. But that leaves nine seconds remaining in this one with the Stallions up 27 to 14. Five seconds on the play clock here. Snaps it. Quick throw. Gets the completion. And he's going to get brought down. And that is going to be the game. With the final score, Birmingham winning 27 to 14. Let's go. Let's go. That's how you start off the season right there, baby. That's how you start it off. I see that they, yeah, that's, yeah. Are they letting him run a free play here? That clock was already on zero, but it matters not. It matters not. If he wants the extra yards, I'm sure that'll help somebody somewhere. All right, but the final one, 27 to 14. So thank you guys so much for coming through here for the stream. I know it's been a minute here, but, hey, what better way to start off the UFL season than to start off with a JV return, right? So... Tomorrow will be the next stream. Hopefully, I'll see you guys then. Oh, says good game. Better stream, JB. And glad to see you back. Hopefully, everything is working out for you and your family. Thanks for streaming. And also, congrats, Stallions and Pats legend, Matt Corral. Yes, I appreciate that. I really do appreciate that. And yes, it feels good to be back. And I'm excited. We've got some good things coming up here. So definitely looking forward to it for sure. But, yeah, JV's going to go ahead and get ready to end this stream. But, yeah, thanks, everybody, for coming out here. JV really appreciates it. And, again, I know it's been a minute, but thanks again for coming through, guys. And so, yes, but take care. Let's see. Brayden says, great stream, JV. See you tomorrow. Yeah, thank you so much. See you tomorrow. And continue to put those videos out there, Brayden. You know, continue to put them videos out there. And, yeah, good things are going to happen here. That is for sure. But, yes, Everybody, take care. Thanks for coming through. And again, just to recap, Stallions won 27 to 14. And so we'll be back again next time. And so let's see. Kevin says, how many yards does Lewis have? And so, yeah, let me go ahead and pull that up for you. So, yes, yeah, so um, Perez has, he's 19 of 28 for 214 yards passing. He had one touchdown, one interception, 68% completion. So, yes, he finished with... 214 yards passing. He also had two carries for six yards as well. So a total of 220, but 214 of those passing. So hope that helped you out there, Kevin. Absolutely. You have a passing yards, 214. But yes, thanks for coming through here, guys. And so I'm going to go ahead and I will be ending the stream here shortly here. But again, I will be back again tomorrow. And we're going to see the Roughnecks versus the Showboats tomorrow. So hopefully that will be a good one there. I'm excited for it. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's see. Kevin says this dude sold half your uh, lane ticket. Oh, man, I hate to hear that. I hate to hear that. Absolutely hate to hear that, Kevin. But, hey, Kevin, definitely – you know, in the future and stuff like that, we'll, you know, if you come through, we'll certainly connect on some, you know, plays and stuff like that. I like to make a couple plays myself. I didn't make any on this one because I wanted to see opening night how they were going to look. But I thought about taking the over for C.J. Marable in this one and stuff like that. But I I'm looking forward to seeing how some of these player pops um, do go out there. But, yes. But, yeah, you guys take care here. Have